And uh, before we recognize the first person for this morning, let me recognize the virtual present Senator Amy Marcos, Senator Francis Tolentino, and Senator Nancy Dean. Did I miss any senators who are who is present? Wala ni po. Then we uh, call on the committee secretary to acknowledge our first persons for this morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, um, may, may we acknowledge the virtual presence of Under Secretary, Secretary Jesus Mateo from, from the Department of Education, Secretary Sambat, from the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, Director Rosalina Constantino, Assistant Executive Director, Planning Office, uh, Mr. Celestino Millar, Chief. Tesla Specialist Planning Office, Isaria Dalimpinas, Tesla Specialist Planning Office, from the Federation of Inter International Cable TV and Telecommunications Association of the Philippines, Ms. Estrali Taneng Julian Tamano, National Chair, from the Interagency Task Force on Emerging Infectious Diseases, Dr. Enrique Paya. Director for ITS from the Department of Health, Dr. Beverly Ho, Ms. Riva Gutierrez, and from the COVID-19 National Task Force, Mr. Johnny Gerardo, from the League of Cities of the Philippines, Ms. Veronica Hitosis, Deputy Director for Policy and Programs, from National Parent Teacher Association of the Philippines, Wilfredo. Rodriguez, President, from the United Nations Children's Fund, Mr. I.C. Feingold, and Ms. Tess Felipe, Basic Education Specialist, from United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, Ms. Stephanie Louis X. Neva, from INET Philippines, Ms. Laura C. Arellano, from Democracy.net Philippines Engineer Pierre Tito Gala, from Better Broadband Alliance, Mary Grace Mirandilla Santos, lead convener, from the National Association of Public Secondary Schools of the Philippines, Mr. Wong, dear president, Philippine Elementary School Principal Association, Dr. Ferdinand Milan, president, from National Association of Public Secondary Schools, Eds Incorporated, Arnolfo H. Empleo, National President, from Philippine Public School Teachers Association of the Philippines, Maria Leda Balbas, Astrologo, Head, Administration Department, from Public School District Supervisors Association, Mr. Sergio P. Cabrera, President, Attorney Joseph Noel Estrada, Copeya Manager Director, of the Association of Private Schools Association, Mr. Elizardo S. Casilag, President, and from the Pasig City Local Government Unit, Mr. Al Edralin, Office of the Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Committee Secretary. And once again, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Uh, this is a continuation of the uh, resolution that we filed, um, and we heard last May 14, 2020, uh, the resolution is to determine the impact of COVID-19 pandemic to the country's basic education system. It is actually a twin resolution. Another resolution was to inquire into the implementation of the free internet access in public places, because we think and we view that these uh, two uh, topics are interrelated, especially in the rollout of the learning continuity plan. Um, uh, what we want to hear from the stakeholders, especially the Department of Education, are updates regarding the Learning Continuity Plan. And uh, we have uh, heard the Secretary and the DepEd team about the, um, uh, the current rollout or rolling out of the Learning Continuity Plan. Uh, that's why we also invited uh, stakeholders, you know, um, principals, superintendents, uh, advisors to uh, share their view on the rolling out and also the challenges that come with the rolling out of the learning continuity plan. And then later on, we will segue into uh, the 
implementation of the free Wi-Fi because we view that the free Wi-Fi is a potent uh, tool to uh, deliver education to our children, especially uh, that they are stuck in their homes. Uh, why the free Wi-Fi law is the best uh, law that will deliver uh, education to every single uh, child in their homes. And we want to uh, inquire whether uh, this law is being fully implemented and how long can we see some fruits of this law. Um, with that, we will uh, start off with a uh, briefing and an update from no less than our good Secretary of Education, Secretary Liling Briones. Ma'am, thank you very much for joining us this morning. You have the floor. Secretary might be on mute. Yes, uh, naka unmute na po. You said, can you hear us? We can hear you, Mr. Chair. Okay, uh, you said, uh, Umali, the uh, I can see that it's the secretary is already unmuted, so. If you can proceed. Secretary, can you hear us? We cannot hear you, Secretary. Yes, Mr. Chair, we can't hear Secretary Briones. Secretary, uh, we cannot hear you. Secretary Briones, we cannot hear you. Naka unmute ho kami di kayo dito sa control, but we cannot hear you. Can you please try? Mr. Chair, while uh, waiting for Secretary Briones, perhaps you can start with uh, Chairman Popoy Rivera. We see him around. Secretary Briones, are, can you uh, can you hear us? We cannot hear you, Po. I think there's something wrong with your uh, with your um, audio. Mr. Chair, naririnig po kayo ng aming ma'am Liling pero for some reason inayos lamang po para po ma nakita rin po na unmute na pero inaayos lang po Mr. Chair but they, they can hear you too Mr. Chair. Okay. You said uh, Umali, do you have uh, any other representative from DEPED who, uh, who wants to uh, proceed? Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, 
uh, Insider Secretary Briones, uh, who would like to present this, Mr. Chair. If okay. Uh, I, I beg for your indulgence, Mr. Chair. Okay, well, uh, we were waiting for Secretary Briones. Uh, we will call on Ayataf uh, to give us a uh, snapshot and a view on uh, the situation, COVID situation in your country uh, in relation to education, no? because this is a hearing on basic education. So, of course, the decision on opening classes and whatever to undertake whatever modality is hinged on the analysis of IATA. Um, so, we Dr. Tayag. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Mr. Yes. Chair. Um, Naririnig na ako. Nagbibili talaga tayo sa private ng family. So, possible yun. Alam mo naman yun. Naririnig na. Naririnig na. Okay. You have the floor. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chair and all others who are in the this uh, morning's hearing. Uh, before I proceed, I would like to express the gratitude and thanks of the Department of Education, your committee, and all other committees in Senate, uh, in the Senate, as well as in Congress, which have been supporting us, giving advice, and also uh, helping us keep an eye on our budget. Um, I would like to start with uh, two quotations. Um, one is from Yuval Noah Harari, who is now very well known as um, uh, uh, one who has, looking, who has been looking into the future. And his chapter on education says that schools should switch to teaching the forces, critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. And most important of all will be the ability to, de to deal with change, learn new things, and preserve mental balance in unfamiliar situations. And then I would like also to quote from the president himself uh, when he uh, commented on education um, last a few weeks ago or one week ago. And this quote has not been picked up actually, word for word, says I am impressed with the simplicity of the program referring to LCT. Um, and I believe all that, uh, that you have said is really feasible. That I believe all that you have said is really feasible. Uh, radio, Kungulang TV, and all of these things. I believe we have a very workable program, and I support you. Should you require any help from any of the departments, feel free to communicate with them. On the question of funding, I will, so to speak, scrape the bottom of the barrel. Kung wala na tayong pera, hilaan natin sa edukasyon ng mga bata. That's what he said. And uh, another quote also from the president, where he again reiterated his support for what we are doing in the Department of Education. I would like to share uh, the numbers on enrollment, Mr. Chair, as of uh, this morning at 8 o'clock. This morning, uh, our data shows that 9,961,396 learners have already uh, registered. Our registration is from June 1 to June 30, um, with um, Region 4A uh, having the highest level of enrollment, over a million. Uh, region 3, and then, of course, National Capital Region, which, in spite of its being the the focus of COVID intensity uh, has already 1.4 billion uh, enrollees. And this is during the eighth day of uh, enrollment, uh, 9,961,000. This is the result of operation from the legislature, uh, from local governments, uh, especially at the barangay level, our own teachers which have been tracking the students and all our officials. And after eight days of enrollment, we have already achieved 6.26% of our projected enrollment for 2020. And of course, we also thank the parents. 
And uh, we also like to report, uh, Mr. Chair, that uh, LGU support has been pouring in. Uh, we believe that um, the role of LGUs has been uh, expanded, especially since we are uh, uh, presenting, we are sharing a, a, a menu of various approaches, and they work very closely with us since, like the DepEd, they are right in the field and they are familiar with the schools. And LGUs have already committed resources for learners and teachers. Uh, as to your question about the progress of our learning continuity program, uh, our various regions, we meet uh, at least once a week, sometimes every other day, and we have already submitted their contextualized uh, LCPs. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we are all aware that each region is different from all other regions. And so even as we have a broad LCP, which was formulated at the central office level uh, in cooperation with our field officials, this have to be contextualized in the, uh, as far as schools and localities are concerned. And we are uh, approaching the uh, advice of the president, the various um, agencies in government also for their help and cooperation. Uh, the development of the modules, uh, Mr. Chair, as I mentioned, um, we started with more than 15,000 uh, learning competencies, which we expect uh, uh, our learners to uh, um, attain uh, during the, uh, in the basic education. And we have reduced this to just below 5,000. And we are focusing on the most essential, uh, as uh, advised by many uh, of you in the Senate, as well as from the public and parents. Uh, since our teachers, after the two month vacation, have already reported starting June, uh, they, they, we requested them to report so that we will not have any uh, administrative uh, nightmares. Um, uh, they're entitled to two months vacation, they had a two months vacation, so they have to officially report to us starting June, and they're already helping out with the enrollment. And we are going to start the training, the formal training, the upskilling of, of teachers, as well as also learners uh, for the uh, new curriculum. The reduce we call the most essential learning competencies, which were uh, developed uh, at our level. So uh, we want to provide uh, safe learning opportunities to all our students without requiring them to go to school as mandated by the president. And this is through blended or distance uh, learning. And this is consistent with the preference of the president that we do not send our children to school unless it is safe to do so. And the detailed plan of LCP is contained in our basic education learning continuity plan. And uh, I am pleased to, uh, to share the information with you, Mr. Chair, and all those here. Uh, our LCP has been the subject of uh, uh, admiration and um, uh, praise from other countries and from our fellow ministers of education in Asia. So I'm going to present, I have been invited to present our LCP to a meeting of East Asian uh, ministers of education um, next week so that we can share our own experience with other countries who are also developing their own continuity plan. <laughs> So uh, our basic education plan provides uh, guidance to all levels of governance, but we are contextualizing them and our instructions to our regional directors, our superintendents, and our supervisors is to contextualize them. Uh, our enrollment forms, Mr. Chair, uh, ask uh, questions as to does the child have a uh, um, cell phone? Uh, is their television at their home? Do they have radio in their home? Um, do they have a uh, um, desktop uh, in their family homes? Because part of the learning process will take place in the homes of the children. And so at the school level, uh, our LCP will be adjusted. And these are reported to us. 
So our basic principles of protecting the health, safety, and well-being, as uh, mandated also by the president, to ensure learning continuity. Uh, one of our uh, the senators also has uh, um, uh, um, has uh, said has stated that um, we will we might have lost generation of learners if we uh, postpone or delay uh, the continuation of the learning process. And we want to facilitate the safe ret return of learners and teachers. And uh, number four is very important to us, Mr. Chair, that we have to be sensitive because there are equity considerations and concerns. And on this, international partners, the business sector, parents, and even celebrities are already announcing their desire and their uh, commitment to, to help on these matters of toys, of gadgets, of uh, tablets, and so on, which uh, our students, our learners might uh, need for this coming uh, school year. However, Mr. Chair, we also have issued a memorandum specifying the requirements that we would uh, need that are necessary if a child or a family uh, wants to acquire, because there is sudden surge, surge of manufacturers of cell phones, of desktops, and of tablets. And we want to ensure that uh, this can accommodate, especially the contents of our commons. And so we want to link our continuity plan to our original pivot to uh, quality, because that's what the Constitution uh, instructs us and so long educated and also future thinking and education. Long before COVID, we already uh, made um, the shift to so long educated and with the help and the support of the Senate and Congress, we are setting up a future thinking group in education. We want to have more or less uh, an idea to identify what are the trends in education beyond our own uh, terms of service, perhaps uh, in 20, 30, 50 years, what will education be like? And also to ask ourselves, with all the changes that are going on, what kind of human are we going to raise? What kind of learners, what kind of adults are we uh, going to raise to prepare them for all the changes that are coming in? And so uh, we have had uh, the streamlining of the curriculum, which I said, uh, from more than 15,000 learning competences, we have reduced this to 5,000 required uh, competences. And we also have multiple learning delivery modalities, which will be described in several of your hearings. And during this month, from June to August 24, we're also preparing our teachers and our school learners for multiple learning delivery modalities. Also, the first week of the opening of school will be devoted to psychosocial preparation, not only for our learners, but also for our teachers, because uh, we are now uh, shifting uh, our strategies in terms of the basic uh, strat strategy for uh, learning. We also have reconfigured uh, Brigada Escuela, uh, during which uh, parents and the private sector, business sector, celebrities make donations to schools. Uh, we have suggested that instead of the usual uh, backpacks and usual pad papers, ball pens, notebooks, perhaps they can think of, of gadgets. And in terms of preferences, focus on communities and families which may not be able to afford. Uh, we have learned, for example, that there are 179 million uh, uh, cell phones uh, in the country, even as we have a population of 100 million. But that does not mean that every child still has a cell phone in particular areas or, or a desktop or every parent has a desktop. We have learned that 87%, for example, of our teachers own um, desktops in their homes, but these are their personal belongings. And so we will endeavor also to provide our teachers with official DepEd uh, uh, gadgets, uh, tools, 
uh, which will be uh, of a specific color. So in case this will be stolen immediately when you open it, it says that it is a property of the debt end. And there are very uh, powerful safety features uh, in these uh, 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 laptops. And we started already furnishing this to our uh, computer laboratories, but we think also of the teachers whose work has been expanded, even as they themselves already have uh, their own cell phones, but these are for their personal use and they have paid for them personally. Um, of interest to you, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, would also be uh, the finance procurement and delivery aspects. We have initiated uh, changes, reforms in our financial management system. We are adjusting uh, during the, um, when the Bayanihan law was, was passed, uh, I think you are all aware that the various departments uh, contributed to the raising of the required funding as approved by Congress. And uh, uh, DepEd had a cut of 1.7 billion pesos in terms uh, of our budget, largely for the uh, for uh, GASPE and for assistance to private sectors. Because Sabinila, the academic year will stretch to the next year. So the first six months, muna ang uh, in allow sa atin. This is 7.9 billion. Practically, uh, 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 8 billion has been uh, 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 cut from our, our budget. But we are negotiating for uh, this year and also next year with the Department of the Budget so that we can focus on the LCP. Uh, we have also uh, informed the public that uh, our blended or distance learning modalities, right now there is a bill which is filed and is gathering uh, signatures at the fast pace, uh, sponsored and initiated by uh, Congresswoman uh, Escudero and um, on, on the blended uh, approach. Um, we will be printing digital mo uh, modules to be delivered to the homes of students. Private schools are already doing this to be picked up by parents at designated places. This is for places without connectivity, whether it is radio or television or what. And uh, we tried it for the enrollment period and the barangay, the village uh, uh, official dump has been very helpful. Now, uh, our online learning resources, uh, the most popular of which is the DepEd uh, Commons, uh, where lessons, uh, where tips to students, uh, tests, uh, learning resources are all contained in the DepEd Commons. We already have over uh, 8 million subscribers, parents, teachers, and learners, and we get good feedback from abroad especially parents who want to monitor the progress of their children's learning. And of course, we have television. When all else fail, and so far as platforms are concerned, we have television, which has been around uh, for some time. And we are aware that um, the law requires uh, television stations to concentrate 15% of, of their air or showing time to programs for children. And we tend to, to make use of this uh, available time. And we already are receiving offers, not only from the official government uh, stations, radio and television, but also from private uh, sector uh, communications giants. We are, I myself have led the negotiations with one of our largest communication giants for uh, free, uh, free use of their facilities so that parents, children, and teachers can more, uh, more of them can uh, avail of the end of commons. And of course, if there is no television, there is always radio. Mr. Chair, as a child, growing up in a mountain town in Negros, I was already aware that there were what we were described as schools of the air, which were uh, run by uh, uh, church organizations, civil society organizations, giving lessons by radio. And this is also done in other countries, to farmers, to housewives, uh, and so on. And we, the, we have been receiving offers from 
municipalities, we have learned uh, uh, and we have realized that municipalities have a good number of them have their own radio stations. Big urban uh, cities have television stations uh, as well uh, within the limits of their boundaries. And then big universities, but which offer basic education, have television stations, radio stations, and have developed programs which are really designed for learning. So um, as I shared uh, with the president, uh, we are not really, we are, on, we are still transitioning to new normal because these are old normal strategies for learning. We are only, what we are doing is shifting from what we are used to, which is largely, mostly face-to-face, -face. responsibility is that of the teacher. But now we are blending whatever uh, approach is practicable, whatever approach will work with the cooperation of local government and also an expanded role of the parents who will be monitoring the progress of their children, as well as the expanded role of the teachers uh, themselves. Now, um, we have the framework, we have given the menu of options, we have been, we are inundated or flooded with uh, assurance of support and offers uh, for uh, our, our programs. And, but we have delegated to the regional directors because they are right in the field. They know what is happening uh, in their particular regions on the modalities, the mix, the blending of approaches. Last night, for example, uh, uh, yesterday, for example, uh, a parent said that he has five children and only one laptop in their house. And how do you resolve this? And I said, discuss it with the head of your school because I'm very sure a solution can be found. The schedules are already being worked out at the school level. And I believe that this is how uh, administration of a huge uh, institution like the Department of Education should be, be done. Um, we provide a central office, the overall policy, the overall direction, the menu of choices, but at the level of the, uh, the field, we have to make uh, adjustments and recognize the different characteristics of the various regions. And the level of enrollment, as I said, we achieved already as of this morning, 36% of our projected enrollment shows that the parents are cooperating, local governments are cooperating, our teachers are cooperating in tracking the students. Uh, Mr. Chair, each student, each learner who is enrolled has a permanent number, so he can be traced if he moves from school to school. Each school has a number. This was initiated by my predecessor. The rooftop of schools, you will notice and you will recall, there are always numbers on the rooftop in case there are calamities and help uh, will be sent by air or whatever. And so this, uh, um, this is how technology has been used by a huge department like the Department of Education to respond to the crisis. What we are saying and um, among ourselves is that we are still transitioning to what is described as new normal. We are conversing what is new normal for education. But in the meantime, the learning process has to continue and we are making use of things that of strategies and approaches and tools which are already here. What we are doing is giving more attention, expanding the level of concentration, the level of participation. And we know that it is very difficult, it's very tough. Questions are being asked, Mr. Chair, are we ready? Well, we are right now, we would not be ready on this, on this day. But by August 4, we believe we can be, August 24, we can be ready. And we are on the road to readiness with the level of support that we are getting from uh, in the entire uh, Philippine uh, society. And um, 
technology, as I said, has been very helpful. In the meantime, um, we are uh, streamlining the curriculum, as I said, and uh, we have not uh, reduced in any way or delayed in any way uh, the uh, allowances, the salaries of the teachers. Uh, Depth Ed Commons is expanding. Uh, we are now uh, starting to print uh, modules for places which don't have uh, connectivity, the self-learning modules. And we are already starting the upskilling and reskilling of teachers. And I myself, Mr. Chair, I'm not a techie person myself because my generation was taught how to type and not how to use computers. So I will be learning along with the teachers during the next uh, few months. But we also need mental and psychosocial support services because of the change in emphasis, because of the redirection because of the pivot towards what we describe as quality education, uh, Mr. Chair. And so the first week of classes, uh, the opening of school, will be devoted to mental and psychosocial preparation for our teachers, for our learners as well. And also we are looking for ways by which the school-based feeding program, uh, we know that in the Senate there is great support uh, for uh, an expanded school-based uh, feeding program. And we'll be working with the National Nutrition Council and also with local governments who have their own uh, feeding uh, programs. So we are uh, on the road to readiness, Mr. Chair. And once again, we'd like to thank you and other committees, your fellow senators, other legislators, who have consistently taken not just a cursory uh, interest or a drifting interest in education, but have tapped and supported and sustained us through this journey towards readiness by the time schools will open. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary. And uh, I've mentioned this in a couple of um, events that uh, really commend DEPED for um, innovating and coming up with solutions to continue the learning of our children. And uh, I think more so that we need to emphasize and to give a lot of attention on the welfare of our children, especially in times of COVID. It's no easy task. In fact, uh, during the last hearing, I can see the struggles and the challenges that the department uh, is facing. but. Uh, during the uh, unveiling of the LCP, I can see that uh, innovations were implemented and um, a lot of on on the ground consultations were made. Naniniwala po ako na maraming innovation solutions will come from the ground and uh, I really commend that the department for listening to the superintendents, the principals, the teachers to come up with uh, innovative solutions. Uh, this is the first part, of course. The the most challenging part will be implementing it on the ground. Because the realities on the ground is very much different from what we read on paper. So with that, um, we'd like to go deeper into the discussion of the um, the learning continuity plan, um, Madam Secretary. And uh, we also, uh, I just have some questions, no? And, um, the enrollment seems like it's it's uh, it's quite encouraging uh, after uh, one week uh, we're, we're seeing about 36 percent uh, enrollment uh, in Valenzuela I checked it's about 60 percent after one almost uh, one week so it seems like our parents are also very excited of uh, uh, sending their children to uh, the virtual school uh, in this case um, and uh, I can see that numbers are quite 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 encouraging. I hope we reach our target. Uh, we still have approximately uh, two weeks left. I hope we reach the 100% target. Um, but so far, um, Madam Secretary, I, I know that in your enrollment process, you also track the, uh, you also conduct surveys, a quick surveys. Uh, ilang po doon sa mga surveys niyo ang meron pong uh, cell phone or smartphone po yung mga pamilya natin? 
We had uh, more than 800,000 respondents. Uh, uh, yung, yung survey namin na kaano sa teachers, no? kasi sila ang frontliners, kumbaga. And uh, it is more than 80%, 7% of them have their own uh, desktops, laptops, etc. But these are their own. Uh, and they use them for uh, various uh, purposes. So uh, we are looking forward to being able to provide uh, our teachers with such gadgets that will uh, also facilitate their work. Uh, we are setting standards, uh, um, Mr. Chair, uh, ang gusto natin, Honorable Chair, that uh, yung capacities ng kanilang gadgets would be sufficient to, to contain uh, all the learning materials, the features that you are looking uh, for. And we have already made such issuances. For example, uh, the city of Manila, uh, made inquiries with us, and they are exceeding uh, the minimum standards that we have set uh, as requirement for, for gadgets, because Manila is going to provide uh, the, the children. Now, in so far as homes are concerned, uh, yesterday we already started tallying the results of the survey. We're looking into uh, uh, homes uh, which have not only the teachers, but also families. And this is where we are, very uh where we are sensitive uh, about because when you introduce new ways of doing things we introduce new technology or even uh, expand uh, existing available uh, approaches uh, there are always equity considerations in countries uh, like ours where you have this uh, social uh, differences so um, we are looking into this and this is why we are uh, communicating with our donors, uh, both uh, foreign as well as celebrities and uh, private business and so on, that uh, if possible, uh, if possible, uh, we should focus and concentrate on, on families which don't have these gadgets. I say, well, it's easy to say, well, there are 159 million cell phones roaming around, but uh, you would have children perhaps with two or three cell phones or families with two or three tablets, but there would be families which may not have them. So, comparing a uh, fo focus not then to those who are in need. And this is what uh, our partnerships program uh, is doing, uh, encouraging our, our, our donors to, um, because donors, of course, always have their preferences, uh, but we want to help identify what the preferences should be. And the surveys should show this. Ang surveys namin ngayon is on the teachers. Uh, kasi importante yun. And then on the availability of cell phones as an alternative. Because many people are attending meetings, uh, giving instructions, uh, using smart cell phones. No? And marami na talaga. But we want to know, uh, in particular communities, what is the most prevalent mode by which we can communicate with them. This is where the role of the teacher, the regional director, and the school officials is very important. Kasi yung tracking, but it's easier to track a class of maybe 20 or 25 kids rather than at the central office where we are tracking 27 million. So it's a field level, as you correctly observed. Talagang, uh, that is where... Uh, the battle and uh, and the action uh, will take place uh, with our advice and your advice and our own monitoring system. Uh -oh. uh, Madam Secretary, the reason why I ask is uh, I understand from the pronouncement of the president as well as the department that as long as the general policy is as long as there is no vaccine, we will not have face-to-face -face classes. Is that correct, uh, Madam Secretary? Uh, the president made uh, that uh, statement after which uh, I met with him and he summoned me and I appraised him of the <clears throat> situation in education. And that is when he made his declaration of full support. Right now, his policy stands. And as we move along, as we transition, 
we will be briefing him from time to time, especially on the state of uh, the development of the vaccine. And um, <clears throat> AITF, which is the interagency task force composed of cabinet members, is also tracking uh, the development of the vaccine. But uh, we agreed that even as he says, there will be no face-to-face -face classes, it, the learning process must continue because there are other ways of learning. There are other ways of blending different strategies without necessarily concentrating exclusively on face-to-face -face, uh, face -face, uh, methods. So, uh, Madam Secretary, having said that, distant learning uh, under the LCP will be the mode for, at least in the medium term. Uh, from what I read in the internet, the earliest that we will get some form of vaccine is in the fourth quarter, during the fourth quarter of this year. Uh, optimistic na yon, but others are saying maybe a year from now. So having said that, uh, uh, we will be implementing distant learning uh, throughout the country, meaning, <laughs> Uh, classes will open on August 24, but it will be limited to distant learning and no face-to-face -face learning will be conducted by any school, whether private or public. By August 24, uh, by July 15, our agreement uh, in the Department of Education is we will make an assessment because by the time we already know the level of enrollment and um, the AITF will have gathered uh, sufficient uh, low risk assessments, and then we will report to the president uh, for his consideration. Um, because right now, uh, we would have about uh, 25 provinces who have been uh, progressing very well in their anti-COVID efforts. But um, we also are agreed that we have to comply with the minimum standards of uh, the Department of Health uh, on face-to-face -face learning. And this would be the social distance, which means uh, reconfiguration of the classrooms. Uh, this would mean also uh, availability of uh, first aid uh, clinics, PPE, uh, and also all the requirements of the Department of Health in addition to uh, these other factors. So uh, July 15, we will make an overall assessment and uh, on a week-to-week -week basis, we will be reporting to the president on the status of uh, enrollment as well as the COVID situation. This is AITF responsibility. Yes. But uh, for now, Secretary, distant, distance learning will be the modality. Yes, yes. Yeah. distance learning. Combination yeah, ng distance learning kasi online ang, uh, uh, that would be composed of online strategies like... Um, um, in Open University, when I was vice president of UP, and this was uh, 20 years ago, uh, already had an open university campus designed exclusively for distance learning. And so uh, um, <clears throat> this time we are using them, but it has to be in combination uh, with other modalities uh, like, like television or like uh, radio. See, all of us know that uh, we don't have full con uh, connectivity in all places of the Philippines. And this is why we are also um, supporting uh, your um, bill for a free Wi-Fi, for example, to make them available. Uh, free use of the uh, facilities for the deaf and commons from the uh, servers themselves. Um, and also other communications groups which have offered their assistance and their experiences. Uh, so far, as of now, if we speak of today, uh, that would be, uh, that, that is our target and we are fixed on that because we have to have a target. We cannot uh, wait, uh, as an author said, we cannot wait. The future will not wait while we are getting ready. Uh, we have to be ready so that the future will not catch us by surprise. So uh, that is our uh, um, outlook uh, at present. Final uh, assessment by, by July 15, the state of the LCP and so on. And also weekly updates the president on the status of our plan as well, especially enrollment and 
the issues about uh, vaccine and all that. AITF has a full report on the developments of the vaccine, which I I would not uh, um, take the. I mean, I would not speak for the AITF because we have a chairman as well as a spokesperson. But secretary, does that mean by August twenty four? Assuming lang, no. Uh, assuming lang that the uh, that the uh, situation improves. But uh, I don't think we will see any vaccine by August 24. Um, looking at all the literature, yes. uh, he's saying that we will. There's still a possibility of moving into a face-to-face -face learning in some parts of the country. Uh, well, that is for the president to decide. What we will do is to provide him with all the available information, including. Uh, AITF most likely uh, appraise him uh, on the status. I'm a member of the AITF, but I do not speak for AITF uh, to appraise him on the status of the search for the vaccine, of the development of the vaccine. Well, Secretary. So all systems go for August 24 this time. Kasi yung momentum ng level ng preparations, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, would be, ano, uh, would be uh, disturbed, no? Kasi the teachers are going all out, local governments are going all out, we are all going all out, we have almost 24 in our mind. We make a final assessment and by July, and uh, we report uh, to the president on, on the status, and uh, then he can uh, make the decision himself as uh, your uh, proposed uh, bill in the Senate and in the House uh, is uh, uh, providing for. Senator so, Bina. Mr. Chair. Uh, Chair a, yeah, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Secretary, be honest, balikan ko lang hu yung nabanggit no, tungkol dun sa pagdodonate ng mga tablet. Um, dun sa mga would-be na magdodonate, when will they know where to donate and what kind of specs? Well, uh, we have we have an external partnership uh, uh, office which is headed by uh, Under Secretary Tony Omani, who deals with our uh, major major partners. By the way, uh, uh, general our policy we don't accept uh, cash donations because uh, people receive uh, letters of solicitation for quarterly from me. Uh, and giving bank account numbers for donations for the poor children, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, uh, it can be through the external partnership. It can also be through me, uh, because um, uh, all we can assess which regions, for example, are in most need, where you have the concentration of families na wala pa silang tablets or wala pa silang cell phones or smart cell phones, at saka yung, uh, as I said, the level of the capacity of the tablet. Kasi marami ngayon, we get a lot of offers and uh, ano, in, in the depth and mura na, pwede kulugan, and sabi na, well, we are not in that activity. Doon kayo sa supplier, kung gusto ninyo yung mga lockdown prices, etc. You want to offer your product, hindi sa amin, kundi sa families mismo. So, uh, uh, yun. Pero yung talagang regular donors namin, and we know established na may memorandum, may covered by agreements, uh, sa atin directly, and usually, hindi in cash yan. Uh, thank you, Senator. Sige pa. Um, siguro, Secretary, suggestion na lang, baka you, yeah, sure. you, you, can, you can post all sa Facebook page ng DepEd, yung, yung mechanics on how to donate and where to donate. And then, of course, we also trust the wisdom of the donors, lalo na kong legislators, because they know the country like the palm of their hands also. They have been moving around. So, alam nila yung most in need where the poor families are. Uh, which they uh, which they will require oh, and we'll be happy to cooperate and they're all welcome uh, responses which you'd like to encourage uh, Madam Senator, Mr. Chair. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Madam Secretary, I have uh, some questions on the budget. No? Um, I know for a fact that uh, some of your budgets were cut and realigned to, um, uh, to some anti-COVID projects. Uh, may we get some uh, feedback updates on how much were cut from your budget and uh, ano po yung mga items na nakat? Yes, um, as I was saying, Mr. Chair, generally, uh, overall, we had a 7.9 billion cut in our budget. Uh, but the other uh, aspects, uh, I would like, if with your indulgence and with your permission, I'd like uh, Under Secretary and Sevilla to uh, answer your question, and she is around. Yes, yes. sister. Yes, go ahead, uh, Yusek, Sevilla. Unmute. Unmute. Okay. problem. Yusek, Sevilla, Lincha. We cannot hear you, Yusek, Anne. Nagsasalita ako. Okay, ano nga? Nakamute ka. Yan, unmute natin. Yusek, we cannot hear you. Uh, you sec on, we cannot hear you. We can hear you, Paren, uh, you sec. Kung wala, we'll... Uh... Yusek, we cannot hear you. Uh, pakiayos na lang po yung uh, uh, audio ninyo. Uh, I, I have uh, some follow-up questions with Secretary Liling. Secretary, um, we're looking at distance learning. No? And, uh, um, and in, in the LCP, Learning Continuity Plan, the teachers will play a very big role here. Uh, in fact, the regions and the schools will be given uh, autonomy to determine uh, what is the best modality for them? Uh, having said that, uh, mm -hmm. ano po ang magiging... Uh, uh, kasi nakita ko ho, no, na yung online definitely is not feasible in our country. No? Uh, having said that, then the self-learning modules will be the mod modality that uh, our public school will implement. Ano ba magiging role po ng ating mga principals and teachers when it comes to this modality, the self-learning modules, the uh, distance, distance learning, ano po yung magiging role nila on the ground? Yeah, um, uh, in so far as uh, the online approach uh, is concerned, um, I believe, um, Mr. Chair and Honorable Chair, that uh, the, uh, in the practice of distance learning is, is expanding very fast. It started more than 20 years ago, but on a pick up ngayon because of the of the situation. And you have the, the universities, you have the municipalities, and who can capture our our our, our platform. But uh, for places that talagang uh, there are no other uh, means, then you will have we'll ha we will be using the uh, learning modules, and we are already starting to. Uh, the process of, of printing uh, them. So what is the role? It's not only the delivery of the modules, but also to continuously collaborate with the parents kung anong progress ng students. Kasi kung collect yun, yung 
usual workbooks that are things that a child has to do uh, under the supervision of both the children and the parents. So, um, uh, malaking role, eh, ano ito, parang tri-focal in a sense because the local government the, at the village level, the barangay level will also be uh, helping out. Pero yung teachers will be regulating, will be monitoring, talking with the parents and uh, uh, sorting out uh, whatever the pro problems the children have. And this is why, uh, Mr. Chair, um, uh, it's not only uh, the, the changes that we are initiating does not involve only technology. Kasi nandiyan na yung technology, it has been there for 30 years, assortment of, it's the, the practice of teaching and uh, molding our learners itself which is expanding. Uh, for example, we get feedback from some parents na uh, why give them work? Tunduhan na lang sila kung, kung ganon na they will have to monitor their children's uh, progress. And then some parents also said we don't have the time because we are going to work, etc. And then the teachers also will be doing things in a different way. The uh, lecturing before a ready uh, collection of students in one room uh, is different from perhaps uh, teaching to people you don't see at all, pupils you probably will not see during your lecture. So we will be training teachers, we'll have standard uh, uh, training for teachers, standard lectures, which perhaps, uh, perhaps I will even participate uh, in, in certain uh, lectures or certain uh, learning modes which uh, uh, will be useful for all. Pero yung teacher ang magmo-monitor. But it is uh, not impossible for the teacher to monitor because if he's in charge of how many students, then alam niya, and if he's, he or she is based in the uh, barrio or the village itself, magmo-monitor din niya, which, of course, at my level, I cannot do. And I can only uh, be uh, visiting them virtually from time to time. So expanded yung role ng teachers at saka ng officials. Ang regional directors malaki talaga dahil titingnan nila yung buong region. Uh, like Region 7, for example, is very interesting. You have you have Cebu, which has uh, a very serious, uh, I will not say very serious, which, has, uh, which is still uh, aggressively uh, uh, fighting COVID. Then we have Sikihor, which is... Uh, absolutely zero right from the beginning and it's just one hour away and you have Bohol it's also zero uh, right from the beginning Negros Oriental which is also one hour away but the Tanaw Panamen and from Negros Oriental we can see Cebu the houses from a distance so pero sa amin moderate and so these these variations have to be recognized kung saan Cebu might be different, uh, Sikihor might be uh, different as well, and and Bohol, which is I believe bigger than Sikihor, uh, will also be different. Kasi ang role din ng local government, hindi lang ang teachers is very important because uh, local government officials have various uh, interests. Uh, in the case of your, your hometown, education has always been a major, major uh, area of uh, interest and advocacy. But uh, other local governments have other interests in. So, you know, and also, iba yung kaiba for uh, one region of four provinces, but ibang characteristics. So, uh, kailangan talagang uh, mag-adjust there. So, yes. maraming ano, uh, adjustments to be made. Um, hindi lang technology, it's really the strategy, the teaching, the method, and the monitoring side, and saka yung assessment. Kasi at the end of the day, Mr. Chair, they will take the same examination to move on from uh, high school to college or to, to find work. So, kailangan, uh, it's really very uh, challenging and at the same time, Mr. Chair, Honorable Chair, uh, quite exciting. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chair? Secretary, how far are we in the training of the teachers? Because uh, I understand, no, I, I've seen some surveys that our teachers are um, 
have not experienced this type of modality. You know? And admittedly, uh, no one has imagined uh, uh, a pandemic will strike uh, in our lifetime. So um, I know that TEPED is undertaking uh, massive uh, training through webinars. How far are, are we in that? No? Because the delivery and the absorption of education will be as good as how our teachers execute it. Eh? And um, I, I saw in the briefing that uh, to date, or, or uh, a few weeks ago, we had uh, we only trained 17,000 teachers out of the 800,000. So how far are we in the training? And uh, when are we expecting that all of our teachers will be trained in distant, distant uh, learning? Because that seems to be the modality yes. uh, in the medium term. Uh, thank you for that very important question, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, <clears throat> I will ask also under Secretary uh, Nepo Malaluan to help me answer because the uh, the NAEP or the National Educators Academy of the Philippines uh, is now undergoing transformation as well. But in the meantime, at the level of the regions, they're already uh, starting uh, their own uh, uh, training and upskilling. Kasi nag-umpisa yung edukalidad, wala pa si COVID eh. So, uh, the, the difference is that we have to speed up. We, we have to do our work faster. So uh, I'll ask um, uh, Yusek Malaluan if Yusek Malaluan is around. I hope we don't have uh, uh, audio problems again. I uh, see Yusek Malaluan. Yusek uh, Malaluan, you're recognized. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, we uh, we just have the. Uh, Presentation by NAAP uh, to be as the as, uh, designated supervising execom of the NAAP. And uh, they presented to me the uh, level of preparation of NAAP with various units of uh, uh, internal and also partners from the Edu Forum, which are familiar with. They are developing the modules, the <clears throat> the uh, program that you saw that was uh, by the ICTF. Well, training for the preparation uh, will start to engage in the enrollment process. Uh, it is a teacher-led enrollment so uh the time is after the completion of enrollment and uh, uh as you mentioned yourself uh the uh this is a, a new uh form in a massive scaling up and so we can uh, present to the uh, senator furnish the senator uh, or the chair the copy of uh the modules that uh, have been presented and are now uh, uh, developing. Uh, it is a combination of modules uh, being developed by internal uh, 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 technical specialists of DEPED as well as uh, uh, contributions from the members of the EDU forum. So uh, I just don't, I, I will just pull up my, uh, the presentation of Nayap to me, but uh, probably later in the hearing, uh, should the senator be or the chair be interested, uh, I can uh, uh, give the actual titles of the modules, Mr. Chair. You said, in short, can we train all 800,000 teachers uh, nationwide on time? Uh, we're looking at uh, August 24 as. So I would assume uh, we have to train them uh, uh, a month and a half at the most, so we have lead enough lead time. Do we uh, do we have enough time? It, it will. It is a. Uh, it is blended learning, similar to uh, learning by uh, by our uh, students. So it will be basically on uh, uh, an online uh, platform with self-learning modules for teachers uh, there will be two levels of uh, trainings one are by the uh, uh, the mentors and uh, the trainers themselves uh, and then uh, one that is with respect to the localized training uh, within uh, the respective regions uh, mr chair uh, 
uh, I think uh, uh, that's that's how the uh, training programs are being developed and how the modules are being uh, developed. It will be a combination of uh, the modality, uh, uh, learning about the modality as well as orientation on the learning resources that are also still under uh, finalization. Uh, they are still undergoing quality assurance. Uh, there will be a, as if I recall, there is also a component there on uh, on how they will orient the uh, parents uh, because the first month, Mr. Chair, of uh, or the first days or three weeks of uh, uh, the opening before the opening of classes on August 24 will be devoted to orientation also of, uh, of parents. So that will be part of the uh, training modules that are being prepared for the teachers. Uh, in other words, uh, there are, right now, uh, there are like volunteer uh, training programs, but are not uh, yet the accredited uh, professional development modules that uh, are being prepared by NAAP in coordination with our own units as well as uh, uh, with partners from uh, many our members of Edu Forum. Just to note, Mr. Chair, that part of the uh, restructuring of NAAP, uh, which has been ongoing, is the uh, a vertical uh, a integration of the NAAP central office and NAAP in the region. So uh, we are confident of the uh, organizational setup. And uh, our teachers really uh, are, before the, the limitation, Mr. Chair, is that the training programs are uh, handled uh, really mainly face to face, and uh, there is a uh, that's why it takes quite a, a long time. But uh, with a, a similar approach uh, to the training of teachers, then uh, we are confident that we will be able to give the proper orientation. Uh, uh, by the way, Mr. Chair, just to note also that even uh, curriculum and instructions approach now for readiness to August 24 is to have a, a minimum level of uh, preparation for uh, uh, the opening of at least the first quarter of all the modules shall be ready. In other words, it can also be a, a, uh, a rolling uh, a preparation of the materials. In, uh, after we have uh, fully prepared the first quarter, the second quarter, and so on. But what we are really uh, aiming at is it will be uh, an orderly uh, opening of class at August 24, similar to what has happened uh, as we are seeing now in the enrollment. Uh, we have enrolled uh, more than 9 million already, and there has not been uh, as much a, a issue, whether on a safety issue, uh, a, or a, a, the pace of getting the uh, number of, uh, of target students. Uh, if we are to average, Mr. Chair, for example, uh, the enrollment uh, that has happened with very short preparation and orientation to the teachers, that's averaging as much as uh, uh, 1 million students being enrolled on a daily basis. So. Uh, it's it's our capacity for uh, and resiliency of the uh, teachers also that we are uh, banking on uh, and uh, uh, their ability to rise to the challenges and circumstances of uh, uh, any any uh, situation, Mr. Chair. Well, you said uh, hopefully we can uh, uh, complete the training. Uh, way ahead of the August 24 opening because this is a key ingredient to the success of uh, uh, distance learning. So I understand uh, your briefing, but uh, I really hope that uh, we, we finish it on time. No? The teachers are very important and they should be equipped uh, on, on this type of delivery. Uh, I recognize uh, Senator Binay. Mr. Chair. Since napag-usapan na nga ho yung training, uh, I don't know kung nandiyan si Secretary Briones. Um, as a mother of four kids, parang with this concept of distance learning, napakalaki ho ng participation ng mga magulang ngayon. Eh. So meron ho bang separate training ang DepEd for for parents? Uh, kung meron tayong training for teachers, meron ho ba tayo for 
for parents kasi kumbaga maiiba nga ngayon eh ah uh, uh, dati pwede mong sabihin na kung isa kang magulang so sabihin mo kaya mo nga pinasok yung anak mo sa eskwelahan para turuan sila but uh, with this concept of distance learning uh, kasama dun sa triage ang magulang para dun sa pagtuturo sa ating mga anak so meron mo ba tayong ganong programa if i may uh, answer if i may comment yes secretary go ahead po uh, uh, just an addition to the comments and the information given by uh, yusik nepo at the level of our ictS because we have an ictS unit uh, which is on uh, uh, which is managing our our uh, commons and yusik alain is is around he has uh, reported to me that right now kasi may mga training din sila online while uh, uh, during this month, dahil, dahil kaya pinapareport natin ang mga teachers at this time, eh, there are 320,000 na ang natitrain from, through the ICTS. Kasi self-learning yan, you open the, ano, and then there's a chapter on how to use it, how to do it, mga ganon, mga samples, and uh, the development of materials, in, uh, also in cooperation with the curriculum uh, uh, group. 320,000 na ang natitrain sa paggamit ng ICT-based teaching. I've seen stories uh, in the and the uh, DepEd Commons na, which are very in, very interesting kung saan uh, nakaka-embed yung mga concepts na in a very interesting way instead of the usual lecture uh, lecture method that uh, is generally used in face-to-face. -face. So uh, 320,000 na and then uh itong mga public school teachers uh na train na sila that is 38% already of the public school teachers on ICT based teaching pero the question is is broader of course How about the other modalities no kasi hindi lang naman uh, ICT based like television and so on uh the question of uh, uh, senator Bin, I, I think is very very important because uh not all parents. Some parents say, I, I, I don't want to bother with the teachers, etc. I'm a better teacher for my children. And my mother comments are done on, well, that's fine. But not all parents, as Senator points out, are, are also prepared to uh, monitor. And, and many of us have gone through the experience of not being able to tutor our children because the concepts that they are learning, the way they do math is different from the way uh, we did much before. Uh, we are seriously uh, uh, considering that. Siguro ilagay namin yan sa app in the, the, the Dep and Commons. Uh, it develop yan uh, for parents who want to, to have a rundown on how to uh, to monitor or to uh, what are the basic concepts we are teaching, etc. I think that's very sound advice, which we will consider uh, very seriously. Uh, then, uh, pero siguro we will not say training because some are insulted by the word training. Bakit tao sila ay train, train, they know their children and so on. Uh, maybe we can think of a nicer, more elegant <laughs> elegant way of, of, of uh, maybe the word now is upskilling. Ano <laughs> uh, uh, yun, uh, para... Um, um, mabibrief natin, mabigyan ng overview ang parents. There's a debate on Facebook on that. Parents who want to manage their children's uh, learning and then there are those who say, ano pa kaya nila? Uh, Sulduhan mo kami, bigyan mo kami ng ano, benefits and all that. So uh, there are also uh, private sector uh, ano, groups uh, who conduct trainings. Nag-schedule na sila ng training for parents. Eh, mo monitor namin ito and, and such help would really be welcome, especially from parents who run uh, your honor. Itong mga homeschools, kasi they are used to dealing with the with parents. Itong homeschooling uh, concept which we had for several years already. Uh, thank you for the advice. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair. Go ahead, Senator Binay. Uh, and I guess your secretary be honest, di ba? Meron naman mga parent teacher association. Kasi more, I think, uh, more than uh, learning kung ano yung mga tinuturo dun sa mga anak natin, ang importante din ho ngayon is yung 
constant communication between the parent and the teacher. So baka kailangan yes. may isang uh, I don't know, seminar on how on, kung ano na ngayon yung magiging relationship ng teacher sa kanong parent. Pagdating dun sa uh, uh, learning ng ating mga kabataan dahil uh, Iba na nga ngayon eh. Uh, ang magbabantay ngayon, ang mag-check ngayon dun sa mga estudyante natin, basically yung mga magulang. Kaya kailangan uh, informed at open line between the parent and the teacher. So baka kailangan gumawa din kayo ng, hindi ko alam kung may uh, Viber group yung mga PTA dun sa mga teachers or baka kailangan may mga ganong uh, uh, use din of technology para better communication. Yan lang po, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Senator Bina. Senator Marcos. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And uh, I just like to manifest my agreement with uh, the good secretary, Secretary Briones. Na kinakailangan siguro pagkakataon na ito. Let us seize the opportunity of this crisis um, to finally get away from the one size fits all education uh, notion that we've been operating under. Talaga naman, even within a small province like Ilocos Norte, the differences in uh, the situation, whether it is the digital divide, the capacities of the teachers, and uh, the um, cooperation with parents as well as uh, Barangay Kagawad's uh, assigned to education. Uh, the disparity is massive. It's uh, really, really enormous. So, uh, siguro, panahon na, bigyan natin ang pagkakataon. Yung mga school boards, kasi nandyan naman yung school board natin, nandyan lahat ng uh, grupo ng ating mga teachers, nandyan yung parents association na pinabanggit ni Nancy, nandyan din yung mga private. Sana nagkakaisa yan. At i-organize na natin yung mga provincial board member na naka-assign sa education committee, municipal council or city council or education din yan. Yung Bangkai Kagawa, makatutok sa edukasyon. Dapat uh, sila na rin ang tumulong sa DepEd mag-deliver. At uh, maliban sa non one size fits all, siguro kailangan na wag na lang i, uh, itulak sa DepEd itong malaking problema ng edukasyon. Kailangan yung magulang teachers, yung buong komunidad, yung mga barangay, talagang tulungan natin ang DepEd kasi napakahirap talaga ng sitwasyon natin. Yun nga, Binibilan ko kung 17,000 pa lamang ang natitrain sa ating mga teachers sa loob ng isang buwan, aabutin tayo ng 47 months bago tayo umabot sa 800,000 teachers. Eh, napakatindi naman o, napakadilig na natin yan. Kung hindi talaga tulungan ng lahat, hindi kaya ng DepEd ng mag-isa. Obligasyon rin ng LGU, obligasyon ng pribadong sektor, higit sa lahat ng magulang, natutukan lahat ito. And let's get away from that concept na one size fits all. I think the other question I have, um, which is what we're encountering locally here in Ilocos, because I've uh, uh, spent most of the quarantine here. Lahat ng pinag-uusapan natin ay tungkol sa delivery systems. Ibig sabihin, delivery, whether online, learning packets to be taken door to door, establishing a learning hub for municipality or barangay, or face-to-face uh, -face, uh, uh, maintaining social distancing, uh, undertaking outdoor and uh, um, auditorium conversion into classrooms, kung ano-ano na ang napag-usapan natin. But at the end of the day, these are all delivery systems. Ang tanong ko, alam natin content is also a massive issue. Ang sabi ng mga dating teacher, ang attention span daw ng bata, equivalent sa edad, yung mga minuto. Kung baga, 10 years old ka, 10 minutes lang yung attention span kapag nanonood. Ito, paano yun? Yung content natin, meron ba tayo talagang online content? Hindi yung uh, English na dinownload natin sa free sites, which are okay. Pero ano ba tayong content na in sa Pilipino? Secretary, you may respond. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Senator Aimee, for that uh, very sound and practical uh, advice. We have been saying uh, all along that uh, we should involve even more. But right now, we're also getting a lot of cooperation from the local governments, UNICEF parents. Nag-iba na ang role, nag-expand, and, and this is the difficult part of it, uh, communicating this uh, 
approaches, this this blending, kasi yung blending that's a, takes a lot of skill, of course, as we know from from cooking. <laughs> uh -oh. So, um, salamat for that uh, uh, advice. Ngayon, yung content, that's important. Kasi what are we communicating? What are we sharing? What are we teaching our learners? Uh, as I said kanina, Honorable Chair, uh, from 15,000 learning competences, which will require uh, for, uh, for basic education, we have um, cut it down to uh, less than 5,000. Uh, learning competencies. Focus in tab tawag namin yan, most essential learning competency. Kasi, uh, like, teach history, away pa, debate pa kung si Magellan ba talaga, when did Magellan land, di masawa ba, botuan ba, uh, yung Tierra del Fuego, ano ba, si Kihor ba yan, and all that. Kasi even, even, even these things uh, keep on uh, evolving. So, um, Yung, I know, we have reduced it and it is significant work by our curriculum uh, uh, group. Uh, and, and that question is very important. It's not only the modality, but the content of the modality, which is uh, very important. And um, for example, yung one size fits all, uh, tama kayo, Madam Senator, uh, Ilocos, uh, your province is low risk, classified as low risk in terms of uh, the COVID situation. So you cannot expect it to, to subject it to the same uh, kind of assessment and day-to-day -day, uh, watching as, as LCR, which is uh, perhaps the highest. So, so hindi mo yan compare or they are and, and, and other islands who probably don't e have not even heard of COVID. No. So, so thank you for that and for giving emphasis to that because it supports our contention that the contextualization has to be at the local level. At saka yung content, as I said, binabana namin from 15,000 to uh, to less than 5,000, 4,000 plus na lang. Um, Do we have learning packs? Do we already have learning packs? Sorry. Do we have learning yes. packs already for online? Na medyo Filipinized na, na localized na. Kasi wala pa akong nakikita eh. Pag ating dinadownload natin sa mga open sites, yung uh, for, for free. Kaso nga lang, uh, we're in the process now of trying to find math, for example, elementary math, uh, online uh, content. Mahirap maghanap. Alam mo, wala yata ang Pilipino. Uh, well, uh, when I came in, you know, to a father and son um, professor team from uh, MSU developed a textbook on math, and uh, it is linked to various uh, folk stories. And uh, parang math being an adventure of one tamad, and, and many of us, of course, love one tamad. And so the weave in the stories, yan, mga concepts. And and it's a very uh, it's a brilliant way of of uh, teaching mathematics, and we want to uh, perhaps uh, embed that. Thank you for calling our attention. Uh, we also have been receiving offers. Um, question: for, has, that, uh, has that been converted to an online learning module? Kasi parang we, wala know, online. Yes. We, we are now uh, we are now in the process. Uh, Sabing ani six that's. Uh, we are now preparing the learning modules that are developed uh, from the self field na kinuha namin. Uh, yung ating contestant halimbawa, yung uh, one of our best uh, teachers of mathematics is an IP from uh, Iloilo and he, he was a finalist in the Global uh, Teachers Award uh, in Dubai. And he teaches math using uh, uh, IP concepts of shapes, and circles and so on and so forth and dapat and sinabi ko rin kasi of course at dami na ngayong nag-offer sa atin because they are also having their own programs ng mga communications group sabi ko ayaw ko halimbawa i've noticed and and i agree with you uh i don't want uh sesame street in filipino because we have a lot of stories that we can utilize in the visayan in the Visayas region, lessons Actually, are... I brought, I brought Sesame Street to the Philippines. What we did, we took the two characters of uh, Jose Rizal, yes, as you yes. said. Hindi naman yung Oscar the Grouch and Bert and Ernie lang. Uh, we actually converted the two characters of uh, Jose Rizal's comics, si Pong Pagong at si Kiko Matching. 
para ma-localize. Otherwise, hindi talaga uh -huh. makakarelate. Uh, okay. Kung maaalala, mukhang tumatango si DepEd na uh, Sevilla. Eh, mukhang parang na tayo na abutan niya ka ninyo yung uh, batibot at uh, kaluskosmusmos. Oh yeah, uh, batibot. That's okay. Oo. Sa, sa Visayas naman, yung mga versions natin, um, ano, yung Beauty and the Beast type, we have stories like that or about fireflies and so on kasi uh, si Kihor is uh, supposedly a terrible fuego. <laughs> Swan Central. Um, legends about, yung ililink to mythology, to culture, and and mathematics and the hard sciences. It's it's very fascinating. Pero, and, uh, meron na po ba? Are, are, are yeah. these modules available online? Ako wala pa. We're in the process of uh, producing them. Yeah. Mr. Chair, uh, with your permission, I will ask uh, Yusik Alain uh, their efforts into make Filipinizing. Uh, Yusik Dads pala. Yusik Dads uh, is in charge of curriculum. Uh, Mr. Yes. Chair? Uh, uh, before before you say comes in, Mr. Chair, meron lang kasi ako isa suggest. Ay sa economic affairs at kay secret uh, at kay Senator Angara under finance. Would you join meeting kami tungo sa jobless rates among the highest uh, jobless uh, uh, sectors, joblessness uh, sectors, ang naa unemployed yung mga creatives. So, napakaraming writer, artist, filmmaker, comics, lahat. Eh, niisip ko, since uh, gusto natin i-fast track itong online learning ng ating mga kabataan, hindi ba pwede magkaroon ng cash for work pero sa mga artist? Kasi, sila naman ang makakapag-work nito. So, I was thinking, Mr. Chair, if we can uh, if we can also recommend dun sa work, kung sa work, kung magka-cash for work tayo, huwag lagi yung maglililis ng sahig, ng kalye. Ano ba naman yung creatives naman ang gamitin natin para makatulong sa kabataan? I think uh, this is a very well-known experiment in the 1930s, the work brigades of uh, President Roosevelt during the Depression, where he recruited uh, such writers as Saul Bellow, Richard Wright, and so on, um, to uh, review storybooks as well as uh, tourist brochures. Siguro we can do that also para maiba naman at ma-upscale na, uh, ma-upcycle ang ating uh, mga cash for work. Honorable Senator, very oh, sorry. Yes. Yan. We're starting it out before COVID, pa. Pero uh -huh. on, uh, in one particular region, and BARMM uh, would also have a lot of stories, and we have artists. Uh, that, that's a great idea. The help <laughs> teaching uh, through TV or through platforms and radio is different from you know standing before a class uh, and. Uh, passing on knowledge, hindi na ganon. And, and maganda yun, I love it. Kasi nakikita ko yung mga versions na na-develop. It's exciting, maiikli, kasi you have to adjust to the attention span of the, of the child. Pero the lessons are embedded in a manner na they sink into his, his or her mind. Uh, I, I like that. I like that idea. And uh, actually, Yusek Alain, who is in another meeting, they have already started that for the DepEd Commons. Uh, and uh, nandito din si... Sayang yung DepEd Commons, ano, naabutan ng COVID yung launch sana sa Abril. Yes, yes. Yeah, we, we started DepEd Commons yung nag-declare ng lockdown. Uh, uh, and ngayon, we have over 8 million subscribers na. Gan ganun ka kabilis, ganun siguro ka useful. Pero it, it has to be exciting and, and interesting. Uh, as it, as they should be because knowledge is exciting nothing like learning something new it's like exploring you know and uh, all these uh, uh, tools and strategies will be available salamat for the advice and uh, as you suggested maybe uh, also the senate can help us Thank yeah you.
Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Yung FDCP, NCCA, lahat yan dumadaan yes. kasi sa Econ Affairs, dumadaan sa finance, na yung mga artists nila, writers, yung mga filmmakers, lahat na wala ng trabaho. Yes, yes, so, yes. Yun, ano ba naman tumulong na lang sila sa ating uh, DECED, um, sampu ng ating uh, DOT, para tumulong rin sila sa tourism brochures. Naging classic ng uh, mga tourist brochures written by Sol Bello sa Amerika eh, dahil sila ang gumawa niyan. So, maganda siguro gawin rin natin para sa ating kapataan. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Marcos. Uh, Yusek Sevilla, uh, I was asking earlier about the uh, budget cuts. Uh, from DepEd, you may proceed. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I hope I can be heard now. Yes, we can hear you. Hi, thank you very much. Apologies po kanina. So um, we, we want to share, um, I'm, I'm sharing a document, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is the official letter from uh, the Department of Budget and Management. Um, we were cut of uh, 8.4 billion, including all the attached agencies. But uh, only for DepEd, it's about 8.282 billion. So, ito po yung big breakdown, uh, Mr. Chair and um, our honorable senators. Um, from 2019, uh, 196 million po ang nakuha. These are continuing appropriations. And uh, these are all actually just uh, savings or um, yung pong balance ng aming 2019 budget. The bulk of the uh, Bayanihan Law uh, Realigned Funds from DepEd is uh, shown in this slide. It's about 8.2 billion. Uh, 8, 8 billion is current at yung pong uh, 200, about 200 million is the last year's budget. Yung pong last month school, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, 5 billion was uh, deducted by the DBM. And a bulk of our gas pay program uh, amounting to about 1.7 billion. So unfortunately, uh, yung pung nadagdag sa natin for the gas pay because we have some uh, balances to pay for the previous school year. Ay uh, nakuha rin po ng 1.7 billion. But there's um, a positive uh, addition pa rin po sa gas pay. That's why we are able to pay them at uh, almost 98 percent na po yung amin payment for the gas pay. We are just uh, coordinating with PAYAC with the other balances. The other amounts po ay ito po, uh, very uh, substantial. Our MOE for full amount each were uh, for special education program of uh, million uh, three training centers as well. Uh, and um, this 19, uh, 19 million is for the futures thinking and the 25 million as well. And this 20 million is for the uh, uh, scholarship or our support for athletes uh, was also reduced and uh, another 15 million for our basic education curriculum. So um, Mr. Chair, combined po with the 2019 and the 2020 budget, it's 8.2 billion. We also clarified, Mr. Chair, because we found in some news article that uh, DepEd was reduced by 21 billion. And so we coordinated immediately with DBM. And uh, DBM said that uh, I, I think that it or the uh, wrongly because the, the education billion from uh, the rest is from the tertiary education that's the the chair so eight eight point four billion for the record research chair uh, was deducted from depth and uh, realigned to the bayanihan law we wrote dbm uh, twice uh, mr chair april 27 saying that um we are requesting for no further reduction because of the learning continuity plan and in may 29 uh, right after the uh, the announcement of the president that uh, he is supporting our delivery mode and the uh, learning continuity plan, but the secretary also wrote BBM that um, we are requesting for no more reduction, but instead um, we are re now recalibrating our budget because we funding for the. Uh, uh, you said. No, with the cuts because uh, some of them will impact sample in the senior high school voucher of one point 
direkta sa estudyante nito mababawasan yung estudyante na ang mababawas na estudyante na bawas um mr chair uh, the question about the beneficiaries is actually not that much impact uh, because we have the automatic uh, automatic beneficiaries ibig sabihin po kung siya po ay graduate ng public school at dilipat sa private school ay hindi po natin sila pwedeng hindian so automatic po yun ang uh, ating po kinakalibrate ngayon ay yung tinatawag natin ng mga bago na nasa private school na at gusto pa ng subsidy ito po yung ating uh, dapat na makontrol uh, every year 80,000 students from the private school are given opportunity to have the subsidy. Uh, right now, sa amin pong computation, Mr. Chair, I, we can uh, still accommodate them. However, ang apektado po ay yung payment. Ibig sabihin, we can accommodate the students, but the payment to the school will not be the annual requirement, not the whole school year. We, we are just paying the semestral payment. Dahil uh, tumatawid po kasi ang school year, from uh, ngayon, August to April. So, ang babayanan lang po namin ngayon ay yung first semester ng uh, mga claims ng ating mga private school. The next uh, claim, which is the second semester, will be taken from the next year's budget. Kaya po, ipopropose na lang po namin ulit ito in the 2021 budget. Uh, yun po yung nangyayari, Mr. Chair. Uh, gumagawa po kami ng para na uh, hindi natin maapektuhan yung number of the beneficiaries pero uh, nagkakaroon tayo ng arrangement with the private school that we are just paying based on the budget uh, availability. Yeah, but uh, Yusek, uh, that's that's assuming that the private school will have enough resources and will trust government that they will be paid. Uh, with the budget cuts, uh, the private school will have to subsidize the cost of teaching the student. Eh, may gastos rin sila eh. I'm sure they're developing their own module. They're developing their own uh, system. So, uh, parang pangako to na hindi sigurado kung matutupad o hindi. Uh, based sa competition namin, eh, 1.4 the 1.4 billion cut in the senior high school program will eventually uh, cut 60,000 students um, in terms of uh, beneficiaries. So, ang, ang, ang aking worry, uh, maraming mga estudyante hindi makakapag-aral at yung gusto nga nating matulungan yung uh, private schools kasi alam rin natin the private schools are also, in fact, in the NEDA presentation, they're number two in terms of economic uh, impact and number four in terms of uh, uh, job losses. So, the voucher program is actually a uh, good program that can hit two birds with one stone. Mag-aaral na yung estudyante, makakapag, mapat, matutulungan pa natin yung mga private schools. But with this cut, I'm worried that uh, uh, eventually ang, ang losing end dito yung mga estudyante because if I'm a private school and I will not be, and I'm only going to be promised to get paid, uh, baka hindi, hindi ko nalang kukunin to. I will just, uh, I will just uh, uh, limit my enrollment. Yung po yung aking kinakatukutan. And then if you look at the other uh, cuts, uh, kinatrim po yung feeding program, which we definitely need at this point dahil maraming nga nagugutom. Kinat natin yung SPED program uh, in the name of equity. Kailangan rin natin matulungan sila because they're the ones not going to school because of um, uh, the situation right now. And yung computerization program. Uh, nag-cut rin ng 102, billion, uh, 102 million. Eh, tiba, kailangan nga natin bumili ng computers and laptops eh. Uh, ang cut doon sa SPED is 107 million. Ang cut sa feeding program is 500 million. My point of the matter yeah. here is uh, we're cutting where it's, where it's uh, needed. And education is definitely uh, one aspect that is... Uh, uh, an absolute necessity in these times because we're dealing with the marginalized sector. Uh, almost 80% of your enrollment is in the mar marginalized sector. So if you want to reach out to the marginalized sector, definitely wag dapat ikat itong mga programs na ito. I'm no, I know I'm barking at the wrong tree, uh, Yusek. I know you're 
absolutely you don't have any control on this but i'm just airing out my frustration because nung nakita ko itong mga cuts uh, uh, ang unang pumapasok sa isip ko yung mga marginalized dahil sila yung tatamaan dito kaagad eh yun nga yung tinu- gusto nating matulungan no so um, you don't have to answer that i'm just venting my no, frustration if i may mr if may say if i may mr chair because that's a very valid um observation and the clarification lang po Mr. Chair it was DBM who uh, identified this and uh, well, of course we, we had the concurrence but it's with a heavy heart uh, yung po yung uh, uh, sasabihin namin uh, the reason why we requested for additional budget uh, in our budget hearing is uh, the, the, the main reason that you have enumerated uh, sabi nga po namin uh, even the last mile school and the, the bus pay that sped all of these are uh, product of um, actually these are congressional uh, and the bicam initiatives so i think that's the first criteria of the dbm yung po yatang mga um, uh, additional or new uh, new budgets that were introduced in the 2020 bu- budget yung po yung napasok po talaga sa unang realignment and i know there's a second wave mr senator so we we would like to really get the support of everyone na wag na po sanang matamaan pa ang uh, deped and we, as i mentioned we we did this twice officially na hindi na po ma- masamahan ito what deped is doing is really kung, kung sa tagalog po no uh, pagkasyahin kung ano yung uh, size ng kumot pagkakasyahin natin and and uh, we understand that our private school also has the investment um unfortunately lang po sa amin school year talaga kami so the the remaining budget will uh, go to the next one so yun po ang aming uh, hiningi rin sa DBM yung uh, commitment that all of this are actually needed and essential and if if can be returned kasama rin daw po kasi yung sa bayanihan law na kung sakaling uh, maging uh, mag-improve na ang ating fiscal status um, they said that um, this can also be returned if we will request and definitely we will request Mr. Senator it's it's funny because uh, I, I alam to ni Senator Binay if you look at the bayanihan too and dami doon related to schools and education no and uh, we're 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 saying in the bayanihan too we're adding more budget for education but at the same time we're also cutting in the GAA no more so uh, those cuts will lead to uh, 60,000 students who will lose the opportunity to study. Um, again, no, this is quite frustrating because I know for a fact that we are adding more funds to the education sector so that uh, education will continue, learning will continue even under this situation. And last clarification, Mr. Chair, uh, we are also including in our learning continuity plan the additional funding for the voucher program because we see the role of the private school in the learning continuity plan. So kahit po binawasan kami, ay ipabalik po namin yan under the learning continuity plan. Mr. Senator Binay? Mr. Chair? Mr. Chair? Uh, Senator Binay and then Senator Tolentino. I would yield to Senator Tolentino. Senator Tolentino? Uh, babagsak na tong battery ko eh. Pa 8% na lang. Uh, Questions to my, ano, addressed to my former colleagues in the cabinet, uh, Secretary Briones and sec, uh, Secretary Rivera. Mine is, uh, modesty aside, experiential, my questions. Uh, I, I would I would oppose your parents' participation and training, but it was already raised. I would oppose the 2018 ICT DepEd Joint Memorandum, Memorandum Circular 1. Siguro si Secretary Briones can answer that. I'll be raising two questions. Uh, one is how prepared is DepEd to absorb learners coming from private schools? Because we have received reports that a lot of students from the private schools will be migrating to public schools. Kakayanin po ba yan? You answered that later. But my my experiential question is based on uh, currently I am I was enrolled in a legal education class in the University of California at Berkeley Law School. Tuwing umaga po ito, alas 7 ng umaga, alas 4 sa San Francisco. Nakaka two weeks na po ako, binigyan po ako ng instructions sa uh, Secretary Briones, ganitong kakapal. Ganitong kakapal. Kung makikita nyo. At alam nyo po, nakaka, 
marirelate ko po sa mangyayari sa atin, yung instructions on how to use online. Nakalagay po dito, if technical difficulties prevent you from completing the coursework, please alert your professor immediately. However, understand that professor, the, the professor cannot assist you with technical problems. You must contact the technical support and make sure you resolve any issues immediate, immediately. Be sure to document, save emails and transaction numbers for all interactions with the technical support team of the Berkeley Law School, etc., etc. And dami pa ho nakalagay dito, your ability to engage meaningfully with your instructor and classmates, exercising the full range of your communication skills will be enhanced if you can talk to each other and see each other. We realize that this will not be possible for a variety of reasons, but please use video when it is possible, unless your instructor gives other instructions. The benefits of video will be compromised if your background is distracting, if you can't avoid being in a place with distractions in the background, consider using a virtual background, is a virtual background, and so on and so forth. Ang kapal po nito, ma'am, sir, paano po maintindihan ito ng ating mga grade 1, grade 2, grade 3 sa probinsya? Eh halos ganito din po yung platform na gagamitin nila. Eh ako po, dalawang araw ko po itong binasa uh, to be able to understand just the instructions, just the guidelines. So, mayroon pa ko nakalagay dito. If you are unable to attend at the same time, at the time the class takes place, then you must view the entire class recording. Meron ba tayong class recording? Uh, all recordings will be accessible through the media gallery in the courses. Whether you attend real time or view the recording, you are responsible for all content covered in each class meeting. Napakahirap po nito, uh, Madam Secretary and Secre uh, Chairman De Vera. Ang tanong ko po ganito. There will come a time that a lot, a lot of private uh, groups will be going to your offices, offering their services. Ito para mapadali, ito yung aming software. I have yet to hear, Mr. Chairman, any proposition, any proposal coming from DepEd or even from CHED as to whether they have adopted existing modalities coming from UNESCO, coming from uh, UNICEF, and, other, and others who are, who are doing this right now. Uh, for instance, UNICEF has a learning passport supported by Microsoft to help this to help the children of Ukraine, for instance. And then you have UNESCO. UNESCO has the Institute for Info Technologies in Education to, co to combat COVID-19. And then you have a menu of all the choices. For math, you have Pulia for map, map. You have a Google Classroom, you have Century Tech. You have school, Schoology, you have EdSurge, and a lot of that Brookings has a listing of 3,000 online modalities. Wala pa ho ako naririnig sa DepEd ko ano yung gagawin. It is not enough that we Skype. It is not enough that we Zoom. It is not enough that we Facebook. Kanina nabanggit po ni Senator Marcos yung content. Bakit hindi po tayo mag-link dito sa mga nabanggit ko? Itong UNESCO and UNICEF. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, nabanggit ko kanina yung uh, radio, television, but we have yet, siguro po Mr. Chair, mas maganda nito, two weeks before the opening, kung matutuloy po yung August 24, we should have a demo before your committee. I-demo po natin kung paano nila, uh, paano po nila patatakbuhin itong uh, planong distance uh, learning program. I, I, I am, I am uh, a bit worried, Mr. Chair, that baka sa unang dalawang linggo, sumablay tayo rito. Uh, not in terms of the, the lack of uh, competency on the part of the teachers who will implement this, but the, the proper software that will be utilized is yet one thing. Wala pa ho eh. Ano bang software ang gagamitin natin? Wala pa ho tayo pinag-uusapan. It's, it's not your just taping and uh, downloading. Hindi po eh. Uh, paano po i-grade ito? Paano po yung uh, we're just talking of the delivery, TV, radio, uh, online, but the, the software that will be used, how how will the student engage the teacher? Pa, paano mo tuturuan magbasa yung, yung grade 1 through online? Ang hirap po nun. And just, again, I, I reiterate, itong sa akin hanggang ngayon po, hindi ko pa maintindihan itong 
uh, instructions na binigay sa akin. So, my question, uh, Mr. Chair, is the DepEd willing to tie up with UNICEF, UNESCO, o mag-iimbento na lang tayo ng sarili natin? Baka sabihin, uh, ito ang sitwasyon sa Pilipinas, ito yung ating gawin, ito yung ating gawin dito. But I think, uh, Mr. Chair, education, accepted natin, is universal. Software is sim simply the encoding of human thought. And we, 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 should not, we should not reinvent uh, something which uh, we never invented, reinvent, reinvent something which we, we never invent, invented in the first place. So my question to uh, Secretary Briones and perhaps to Popoy de Vera, wala ba tayong magplano na uh, mag-tie up sa UNICEF, sa UNESCO, and other uh, educational uh, institutions to utilize their own platforms which are being utilized worldwide? Uh, that's my question, uh, Mr. Chairman. And maraming salamat. Yes, Secretary, you're recognized. Ma'am, nakamute po kayo. Ayan. Uh, okay na. Uh, yes. Mr. Chair, um, I would like to thank uh, Senator Tolentino for that question. Ang pinakabuod ng question niya, are we uh, not going to utilize the strategies of UNESCO and UNICEF? Um, for the development of our materials. Yes, we for the past three years, Philippines is a member of the executive committee of the UNESCO on, on education. And uh, recently, our own undersecretary uh, attended a, an exchange of uh, experiences with uh, various uh, ministers, kasi hindi ako pwede uh, pumunta. And so UNESCO is aware of exactly what we are doing and they are pleased with what we are doing. We are also connected with UNICEF because UNICEF is all about children as well. So I um, would like to assure the, the senator that we are already in touch with both UNICEF and UNESCO and we are exchanging experiences. As a matter of fact, next week, next week we will also be uh, attending a virtual meeting with Different, uh, different ministers of education from East Asia, again, to exchange the progress. And they know what we are doing. Uh, then exactly because uh, communication is virtual, no? So we are already in touch uh, with them and we are taking advantage of their expertise. Even UNESCO is helping us out, uh, honorable chair, on the matter of communications. You see, important in communicating the changes. Um, you have um, mentioned this, uh, Senator uh, Aimi has uh, mentioned this because roles are, are, are changing uh, and expanding, technologies are being improved and enhanced. And so it's good for us to, to know what is happening and what the other countries are, 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 are doing. Uh, I hope personally, of course, we, we there is a country which is really leading in education in, in Southeast Asia, and we all admire this country. And this country said, the minister said, do not look at us. And according to one of our uh, regional directors, the size of this country is equivalent only to the size of one district school in Manila. So, I mean, in terms of enrollment. And then you think Liechtenstein, which uh, only has uh, 1,000 something senior high school students, while we that again accounts only for perhaps the enrollment of one school. So uh, I agree with the senator that we have to look at the international perspective and we learn from each other's experiences. But I have always insisted that we develop our own. And this is why uh, they're also interested in the other countries are also interested in what we are doing. So the simple answer is yes. We are linking, we have always been linked with UNESCO uh, regional as well as UNESCO international. And we are constantly meeting with them uh, virtually. So UNICEF naman, the answer is also yes. We are in touch with them locally and we are also part in touch with them uh, regionally as well as uh, internationally. So I uh, would like to give that assurance. But what we come out with, Your Honor, has to be based on Philippine conditions, has to be contextualized. Um, uh, as I commented to Senator uh, 
Senator Marcos, uh, uh, Ilocos Norte is very different from uh, NCR in terms of the risk uh, assessment that we are looking at. And the risk uh, situations of the different countries, UNESCO and UNICEF countries, also differ. So um, the answer is yes. And even UNICEF is going to help us out on the communications aspect. Because we have to, as Senator Bina said, we have to convince the parents. And local governments are now uh, coming around and giving assurances and support. But I say uh, many of them really are interested in education, the parents and the teachers themselves, but the mga training modules. Uh, and aside from UNESCO and, and UNICEF, we are also taking advantage of the combined wisdom of CIMEO. Your Honor, we have the Southeast Asian Ministers of Education Organization, which is older even than ASEAN. And uh, I furnished you an advanced copy of some of their uh, research uh, findings, uh, which are also interesting. And what we did was to ask them to do a comparative study of what the other countries are also doing in terms of motivation. I'm very interested in the motivation of the teachers. So uh, I would like to assure you that uh, uh, we are doing this, but in the final analysis, we have to come out with our own contextualized approach, which uh, hopefully with your support and with your cooperation, and especially uh, your interest in the state of our budget, uh, will be uh, achieved by August 24 as we have scheduled para hindi maano yung uh, build up ng, uh, ng activity. And this is why we also ask the teachers to report in June, even if uh, we will not be opening uh, at a, uh, until um, August 24 as originally scheduled and approved by the IATF. So, um, that assurance we are giving. We know what they are doing. They also know what we are doing. We're exchanging notes, strategies, approaches, and materials. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one last retort, Mr. Chair. Salamat po kayo, Secretary Briones. I agree it has to be uh, contextualized, but my, my main uh, point there is that if we utilize the platform that they're using, uh, because it's, uh, again, I reiterate, it's universal, Facebook. Yes. Google and uh, Zoom and Skype and all the platforms available now uh, in cyberspace were not were not Filipino inventions. What I'm saying is this: there are existing platforms. Uh, for instance, the learning passport of uh, the learning passport of UNESCO of, of UNICEF. Tatagalugin lang po yun. We have the same math. The, the math subjects in in Ukraine, the math subjects in the United States and the Philippines. That's the same. Siguro meron lang pag, kaunting pagkakaiba. Pero what I'm referring to, uh, Mr. Chair, is that why don't we take advantage, not just the best practices, of the existing platforms made, tailor-made, to address this COVID-19 uh, situation by these uh, international educational groups yes. which have tied up with, with the big names. Uh, Zoom, Google, even Huawei was 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 partnered uh, so that mas madali na po yung sa atin kasi hindi naman tayo magi invento na ng Facebook, hindi na tayo magi invento na ng Google. Lalagyan na lang natin yung content but utilizing the same the same platform. I'm not I'm not say, saying that that, that they're, uh, what they're doing is the best but uh, if all if all the major countries in the world are, are doing this, eh, palagay ko po, uh, uh, if we go on uh, with the, the August 24 blended learning We'll still be utilizing a, a the platform invented by by other uh, countries, for instance, Google, Zoom, uh, etc. So, ang sinasabi ko lang po, why don't we why don't we utilize the existing uh, platforms rather than gagastos po tayo kung mag-invento pa po tayo ng panibagong uh, uh, software, gagastos tayo pag merong uh, naglako sa atin na uh, I'm, I'm very sure of this. Come July, come August, there will be a lot of offers coming from business groups. Ito na po yung kailangan natin, uh, Madam Secretary. Ito na po yung makaka-address sa, sa, sa Filipino uh, educational lead. So what, what I'm saying is this, bakit hindi po natin subukan na mag-tie up just on a, just on a limited scale? Uh, for instance, yung nabanggit nyo kanina sa Metro Manila, 
So, i-demo ni, ni, ni uh, sec, uh, Madam Chairman sa kanyang, uh, ni uh, uh, Chairman Gachalian sa kanyang committee two weeks before. So, para mas mapadali na po because we, we will be facing with a lot of problems uh, after after this. Uh, tourism, manufacturing, lahat na po siguro sabay-sabay. So, uh, this is a small world, um, uh, Madam Madam Secretary. Kaya nga kanina, inumpisahan ko, uh, experientially, I'm having these online courses with, with the Berkeley Law School. Eh, ako nga, nah nahirapan na instructions pa lang. So, to simplify all of this, uh, it's not just a matter of sharing best practices, but learning from them uh, with a with a uh, with a grain of humility that perhaps uh, something might work. Yun lang po, uh, no, no offense, uh, Madam Secretary. Madam Secretary. May final respond uh, again, I would like to repeat. We are already linking with them and working with them. We have been working with both UNICEF and uh, UNESCO for the past uh, three years, not only on platforms, but on many other aspects of education as well. So uh, we are learning from each other. And this platform, this Adapted uh, Commons platform, uh, was developed in, in April, and there has been tremendous support. And we can, we are making uh, improvements. And of course, uh, the the modules that will be distributed will be age appropriate for grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, uh, etc. And not necessarily for 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 adults and for graduate uh, level. But we thank you for your advice and for your concern. Uh, it is very important uh, issue. Ang sagot lang namin, ginagawa namin yan noon. And they are aware of what we are doing also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Senator Bin, ay? Yes. Idudugtong ko lang dun sa tanong ni Senator Francis. Secretary Briones, yung pinakitang folder ni Senator Tol, Meron ho bang ganon na piniprepare ngayon ng DepEd for the students and for the parents? Parang a guidebook or a, a manual for them on how we will do this distance learning. Meron Me, mayroong, mayroong dinedevelop, pero hindi ganon ang lengguahe. Hindi ganon ka komplikado. Uh, kaya halimbawa, sinasabi, im immediately inform your professor, but your professor will not talk with you. So at the school level, uh, the teacher will be talking to the parents. I, I, ako, I cannot talk to the parents uh, at, in, to the parent in Marawi or in Ilocos, but the teacher in Ilocos can talk to the parents. The school level, nothing yan, kina contextualize. So, so uh, we are already doing that, and we hope that uh, uh, most of what we require will be ready by August 24. Kasi nakabuelo na tayo, Senator. Nakabuelo na sa trabaho. Nakita namin yan kaagad eh. Yung nag-declare as of March, nagkinigil ang pag-aaral. I, I think you are all aware that I was not particularly uh, supporting the idea of, of closing the schools at that time because it was not clear that children would be transmitters of the disease. And our point was proven correct as, as, as correct, no? Uh, there is no clear or established finding that children are active transmitters of COVID. Pining na namin yan ng gusto because that, that's why we are in the Department of Education. So, uh, ayong mga bagay na yan, uh, kailangan age appropriate uh, para sa grade 1, para sa grade 2. At saka yung teacher and parents, we really have to work very closely. Oo. Alam namin yung ginagawa sa Ukraine. Eh. Alam namin yung ginagawa ng UNICEF in other countries and what's happening in Europe. But uh, we think in terms of what we actually need and what is the real situation. Alam namin na uh, hindi pwedeng once you uh, fits all. You retain the basic principles, the basic approaches, but the specifics have to be uh, contextualized. Uh, Valenzuela, for example, is a very special uh, LGU. It's always on top of the list, no? Uh, and then we, we cannot uh, we cannot say that uh, all LGU should be like Valenzuela because they have a lot of catching up to do. Uh, that is just what we are saying. An approach natin is universal, but the application, especially at the school level, uh, varies. 
you know, you, for example, they are uh, the uh, Muslim autonomous region. You, you, we cannot uh, uh, impose uh, uh, the same standards that we would impose, for example, in a school in LCR or on a science high school, which is uh, uh, regulated by the department. Ganon lang naman. Pero the universal ideas, the universal approaches, uh, they're all there. And we are in constant touch. Either myself or my undersecretaries uh, are in constant touch with this international organizations. Then we are in the executive committee, uh, for example, of UNICEF. And uh, we, we campaigned for that position when I came in. And we are there. So um, so we, we have an idea of what is uh, going on. And we appreciate the concern. Uh, uh, I would be concerned myself. But we have developed it already. Uh, in accordance with global standards, with global expectations, what do we expect at the minimum uh, our children to learn, for example, what should be the content, what is the technology, what are the approaches? So, katama yon, Honorable Chair, that there are many, many offers. Pero ang unang thing at tanong namin palagi, are you willing to whitelist uh, uh, the deaf end users? Ibig sabihin, na hindi nyo pabayarin kasi May mga rates na na ino offer na nung ganon. Sabi namin, uh, ang gusto namin, since mag expand din yung market nila, kasi yung 28 million learners na uh, possible users or how many parents na mag-use niyan, mag maka makabawi sila elsewhere kasi yung mga charges and all that. Ang, ang ninegotiate namin ngayon with the various servers is a uh, white list tayo. And then government is also offering, uh, you have uh, the stations, television stations ng government, although limited pa ngayon ang reach. And you have the universities as well who offer basic education. So, ganon lang combination of what is global. Anong, anong sinasabi natin? Uh, you, you think global but you act local. Uh, ganon ang context natin. And it is happening. They know what we are doing. We also know what they are doing. We know what Singapore is doing. Uh, we know what Indonesia is doing. And uh, we tell stories to the minister in Thailand, what they are also doing. And um, UNICEF consolidates or UNESCO consolidates all the different experiences. Okay, and, and so that, that's how we are working and uh, uh, right now, uh, Mr. Chair. Saka, we started in ano, April, eh, the Global Commons. Immediately, yung kinansel, yung nag-lockdown, nag eh, dinevelop namin kaagad. Renente namin yun. Because we could not wait to make international consultations. Especially since our future's budget was also cut. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senators, for your question and your concern and your advice. And they are really well taken. Thank you, thank you, uh, good secretary. Uh, we're also fortunate that, fortunate that we are joined by uh, Minister Iqbal, and I'm happy that he has been appointed as the Ministry of Basic, Higher, and Tech Minister of Basic, Higher and Technical Education of the BARM. And uh, we also want to uh, hear some updates uh, in BARM, uh, considering that the whole Philippines will be implementing uh, distance learning. Uh, in light of what's happening right now. So, Minister Iqbal, you have the floor. Uh, maraming salamat po, uh, Madam uh, uh, Honorable Chair and Madam Honorable Senator Binay, Senator Marcos, saka iba pang mga senador na nagigyan po. At of course, kay Madam uh, Briones ng Department of Education at sa lahat ng ibang mga guest na nandiyan po sa Manila ngayon sa Senado, uh, ulitin ko maraming salamat at saka salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If I be permitted, uh, Honorable Chair, 
I read a, a letter, not a very long uh, uh, statement, just to appraise the whole uh, committee about the overall uh, situation in the farm in relation to the Ministry of Basic Higher and Technical Education. As everybody is aware, especially the good senators, the, the education sector in the Bangsamar Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao is not just basic education, but it is also composed of uh, uh, three more components. Three more components. First is the basic education. Second is uh, technical education, higher education, and of course, in addition to that, uh, we also have uh, the Madaris education. So it is for it is made up of four components. Although we are operating in a smaller area, five provinces, and with the inclusion of Cotabato City, hopefully very soon, uh, two, uh, two cities and the city three barangays in North Cotabato. So I would start to read my message, uh, Honorable Chair, on behalf of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao or BARM, we would like to express our gratitude to the Senate of the Republic of the Philippines for the invitation to speak on this significant committee hearing in aid of legislation. It is my honor to speak on behalf of BARM Chief Minister Ahud B. Ibrahim on topics of great importance, especially in these trying times the state of the country's basic education system and the accessibility of vital infra infrastructures such as the internet. The COVID-19 pandemic is a game changer. This pandemic has considerably affected our operations and our ability to address the needs of our constituents in governance and public service. The political, psychological, a physiological, social, and economic impact of the virus will persist even if the situation stabilizes or when the curve has flattened, so to speak. As you know, the Bangsamoro government organized its own interagency task force on COVID-19 response. The goal of the IATF is to provide appropriate response and countermeasures to prevent further spread of COVID-19 in barm communities. We are fortunate to have dealt with the crisis at an early stage, and no less than uh, Secretary Carlito Galvez, Jr., the chief implementer of the National Action Plan against COVID-19, has cited the quick response of the BARM during the special meeting on June 4, 2020, held at the 16th Infantry Division camp in Dato Uding Sinsuat. As of June 9, the BARM has started eight positive COVID cases, eight have recovered, and four have unfortunately died. We have 27 active cases, 26 were admitted and one recovering in an isolation facility. Despite the low COVID, despite the low number of COVID-19 cases in the farm, we cannot show complacency and must remain vigilant to control and eventually eradicate the pandemic in our region. One vital area we have to protect is the education sector, where both educators and the students are vulnerable to the virus if proper health and safety procedures are not put in place this incoming academic year 2020 to 2021. One of the immediate impacts of the pandemic to the education sector was that the school year 2019 to 2020 did not conclude smoothly. The schools were compelled to observe quarantine measures affecting teachers and students. Moreover, this pandemic altered the day-to-day -day functions of the Ministry of Basic Higher and Technical Education, or MBSTE. Since April, we have been operating with a skeleton workforce due to the limited number of employees reporting to work. Our processes have slowed down. We have many activities in the pipeline before the pandemic, such as Number one, the recruitment process for new teachers and ministry personnel. Two, the construction of classrooms. Three, 
improving access to quality education in unserved and undeserved, underserved barangays. Four, reforms in our human resource and management system. And number five, communi various community-based education initiatives of our local and international partners in the Bangsamoro. Despite the limitations, we decided to focus on the tasks that we can accomplish. For instance, we prioritize the release of salaries so our employees and teachers will have resources while under quarantine and celebrating the holy month of Ramadan. In May, we release the Emergency Relief Assistance Allowance, or IRAA, amounting 10,000 to all MBST employees, including teachers and contract of service workers. In addition to their salaries, we release the major bonus to qualified teaching and non-teaching personnel of the Education Ministry. Moreover, we are reviewing our programs to meet the basic needs of our constituents during this time. Our partners did the same, and they have approached us to discuss any support that would help the ministry during this health <coughs> and emergency issue. It would be unwise not to consider how this pandemic will affect our ability to accomplish our mandates in the short term, medium, and long term. Furthermore, COVID-19 will exacerbate the existing problems in Ibam, such as poverty, corruption, injustice, and inequality. Like the Department of Education, the Ministry has issued our Education Continuity Plan for school year 2020 to 2021 on May 29, 2020, after a series of consultations and discussions with various stakeholders in the Bangsamoro. A copy of the said plan is available on our official social media, but we are happy to provide the committee a copy for your reference. The Bangsamoro Learning Continuity Plan will prepare us for the incoming academic year under the basic higher technical and modernist education sectors. The policy covers essential topics such as, but not limited to, one, starting or start of enrollment and pre-opening activities of all schools. Number two, the personal development and work arrangement for educators and personnel. Number three, the appropriate teaching and learning processes, alternative learning system and training delivery modalities per sector. Number four, the delivery of education services for learners under challenging circumstances. Number five, instructions for parents and stakeholders engagement. Number six, guidelines for traditional madrasa and Islamic, Islamic learning sectors. And number seven, the observance of health and safety protocols, including the provision of water, sanitation, health facilities. Due to the pandemic, the ministry plans to use, utilize various content delivery options. Our decision shall be based on several factors. One, the risk level, uh, low, medium, or high of the communities vis-a-vis COVID-19. Number two, the location of the schools, whether city center or remote. Number three, the accessibility to te technology and availability of facilities for the different households, communities, and schools. Number four, the student's readiness to alternative learning mechanisms. And number five, the level of teacher preparedness to provide online instruction if necessary. Furthermore, we send surveys to the various school divisions so we have a clear picture of the risk factors as well as school readiness, including information on facilities, internet connectivity, and even electricity. We are fully aware that once classes open in August, the parents will ask two kinds of questions. First, should I send my child to school despite the uncertainties brought by the pandemic? And number two, if I do send my child to school, are the educators prepared to teach during this crisis? The Bible government must have a response to these two questions. On the topic of free internet access in Public Crisis Act, I want to clarify that the Bangsamoro has connectivity issues and not all areas have access to the internet, computer and telecommunication, telecommunication facilities. For instance, internet penetration in RAM is estimated to be as low as 20%. Given this reality, we cannot solely rely 
on the internet for teaching and learning delivery mechanisms, despite the availability of online based platforms such as Google Classrooms and Microsoft 365. Hence, the ministry is exploring flexible or blended learning and teaching modalities, a combination of home-based or distance learning. We will consider face-to-face -face instruction in school and other training centers subject to the local situation and public health measures. Uh, but we are fully aware of the uh, directive or the statement of uh, the president, there will be no face-to-face -face, uh, modality in schools, and we, we respect that. In the Ministry Multi-Platform Communication System, we are aware we are developing with our international partners. We shall use radio and television program, handheld two-way radio communication equipment, in short, uh, short messaging services or SMS, gateway services known as text blast, linking with accredited radio groups in the region, example, Caranzo Radio Forum, an emergency response group, and engaging school network and community-based volunteers. While the internet is undoubtedly a valuable tool, it would be an advantage if the government will fully implement Republic Act number 10929. Nevertheless, it is my humble opinion that we must have contingency plans and explore all available options. We must cover our basis since our priority, priority now is reaching every child and learner and ensure that they will, be, they will not be left behind in terms of learning and development. I hope I was able to share some insights with the STEAM Senate Committee relative to the two resolutions. I would be happy to answer some of your questions and look forward to a productive discussion on this matter. Maraming salamat po. Honorable Chair, can you can you hear me? You are being heard. Thank you, thank you. So any question from your side? I'm happy to answer it to the extent of my ability. Salam alaikum salam. Alaikum salam.
pose a question to Chairman Iqbal. Earlier, he said that the internet penetration rate of BARM is estimated to be as low as 20%. May we be clarified as to whether this refers to households or people? Chairman, uh, it refers to not just household, but uh, including schools. Lalong lalo na po sa island provinces sa Tawi Tawi. Uh, kahit na internet po, ay kahit na cellphone po, mahirap po mag-communicate. Eh, lalong lalo na po kung internet. So basically, ang problem namin, not in Lano del Sur, Marawi City, or in Maguindano, but uh, in the island provinces, especially Tawi Tawi po. Mr. Chair, a follow-up, please. Go ahead, Pierre. Um, Chairman Iqbal, uh, isn't twenty percent a um, an optimistic estimate? I mean, uh, it, this twenty percent might refer to your highly urbanized areas and not the rural areas, because our current estimate of our current average estimates of barn penetration is around five to seven percent only. Uh, that's the average percentage, po. Combine na po yung urban, but yung very rural areas. So yung po ang estimate namin on the basis ng consultation namin sa school officials, superintendent, mga supervisors, at sa uh, yung mga school administrators, sa pati mga parents po, yung po ang nakita po namin at ang yun po ang, that was the result of our consultation and dialogue with our school officials on the ground. So across the, across various areas po yan. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Iqbal. Uh, well, I just want to say, Mr., that uh, I, I commend you for taking the in BARM, uh, the um, team of BARM is committed to reform education. Uh, they put a high stature, high level person to lead the education sector in BARM. And uh, binibigyan nyo na malaking importansya po ang edukasyon sa BARM dahil alam nyo na kailangan to for the uh, future and the development of the area. So I, I commend you and um, uh, I can see that you're uh, doing uh, everything you can to make sure that um, education is being delivered, uh, but not compromising the safety of our children. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Iqbal. Maraming salamat din po sa commendation po. Thank you. We have also some stakeholders that we invited to comment on the uh, rollout of the Learning Continuity Plan. Uh, let me call on Dr. Ferdin Ferdinand Milan of the uh, Philippine Elementary School Principals Association. Sir, your comments po. Uh, we cannot hear you, uh, Dr. Milan. Nakamute po kayo. Yeah, go ahead. Good morning, Mr. Chair. And good morning po sa lahat. Our stand in the Philippine Elementary School Principal Association, uh, we are joining force to support uh, adapted directions in terms of the uh, LCP and the different modalities. However, our uh, request coming from the group of the uh, Philippine Elementary School Principals Association uh, in terms of connection and connectivity, in terms of uh, electric uh, consumption in the respective residences, both parents, the teachers. Uh, in terms of uh, purchasing of uh, isograp or even Xerox machines for the reproduction of the different modules, if modular type lessons or learning will be done in the different uh, region where no risk of COVID-19 or even uh, uh, no COVID-19 cases. Those are the 
uh, appeal of Philippine Elementary School Principals Association in terms of the resolution of uh, the Senate hearing under your leadership of. Dilan po at maganda umaga. We support the ed directions. Uh, we support the modalities. Uh, we salute, uh, salute uh, Senator Quinget Chalian with this uh, program, with this uh, bill. And we salute the ed officials under the leadership of our Honorable Secretary Lilin Priones for a very comprehensive presentation of all learning modalities on what to do in the field. Thank you so much. In behalf of the Philippine Elementary School Principals Association, we wish that uh, comes August 24, there will be any challenges that we will be encountering in the field. Salamat po ng marami. Salamat po ng marami. Thank you, Dr. Milan. And uh, my questions po ako, pero later ko na ho itatanong uh, after listening to the resource persons. Ah, sige po. Uh, uh, we call on... Uh, uh, Mr. Warlito Rosarial of the National Association of Public Schools, Secondary School of the Philippines. Mr. Rosarial. Yes, sir, I'm here. Go ahead, po. Comments po on uh, the learning continuity plan and uh, some updates. Uh, good morning to everyone. This is the National Association of Public Secondary Schools of the Philippines. May I present to you a very brief initial feedback on the Bacolod City National High School Action Research on the delivery of teaching learning processes in the new normal. Sir, can you hear me? Can you see my presentation? We cannot see. This is in relation to our the discussion. We cannot see your presentation, sir. Uh, this is an initial feedback, sir. We cannot see your. Uh, wait a little, sir. Uh, again, oh, this is an initial feedback from the Bacolod City National High School online classes since June 1. Sige na, believe ko dito. Ma'am, sir, can you see, please? This is only very brief. We can see. Initial feedback on the Bacolod City National High School action research on the of teaching learning processes in the new normal. The schedule of online classes effective June 1, 2020. AM session, we have 8 to 9 math, 9 to 10 science, 10 to 11 session, 2 to 3 English, 3 to 4 Aralim Palipunan. May I present to you the critical issues, concerns, and challenges faced by our teachers for these almost two weeks online classes. This is to help our department, even in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic, that we can still continue to deliver our best educational services to our students. Issue one in terms of connectivity. Some places, some places have limited access in terms of internet perceptions. The IT infrastructures, according to my teachers, the need for an appropriate enough funds for the transition of the online program. The IT training, some teachers and students need cross course for a professor course on the online teaching and learning process. I think the challenges Sir, we would like to present this in this here in this public hearing. Internet expenses are personally shouldered by our parents and teachers. Most students and teachers rely on mobile data, which are less stable than broadband connections. Teachers are suggesting to use the online classrooms. Edmodo Canvas for effective teaching teaching and learning process. On, on this action research, there are around 109 students participating. We would like to see how effective 
this action research for our 109 students so that by by August 24, by God's grace, we can continue working on this. Uh, this is only an initial action research, how effective we can deliver our online classes in terms of the delivery of instruction. We are very grateful to inform everyone that the 109 parents are really supporting this program. Uh, maganda po ang initial feedback. However, we need also the support of our government along this line. When I read your invitation, Tong Koldo on sa internet free access, and I would like to present our opinion. Dito po sa school namin, I would like to inform you, wala kami dito pub free public internet access. The school is paying for the internet access. Sana po, sir, the, your committee, your committee will look into this to help us. Maraming salamat po and we are praying to the Lord God Almighty na magtulong-tulong po tayo sa trabaho po natin. Mabuhay po ang aming secretary, ang Department of Education at ang Senado working hand in hand for this for this crisis. Maraming salamat po. God bless the Philippines through education. Good morning. Thank you Mr. Rosa Rosa. Um, may tatong lang ako. No? I, I saw that uh, in your presentation, the challenges are technologically, uh, are technology issues. No? Uh, nakita ko dito, mobile internet data, and then uh, uh, expenses of internet. Uh, with these challenges, can you still deliver the distance learning modality? In my initial meeting with the teacher, sir, and with 109 students, uh, they informed us, the uh, initial reaction, uh, happy sila to do these things, even the parents. However, ito lang yun ang problema eh. uh, The students, the parents cannot support well expenses, even though the parents are committed to support the program. Marami pa nga ang gusto mag-join sa online modeling program namin. However, we are looking into this muna kasi if this is very successful at makita na na mataas po ang results ng test based on this experiment, we'll present this to the Department of Education. More open, sir. Ang initial, uh, happy ang students and teachers sa ginawa namin. We started it last June 1. So how do you address itong problema sa unstable, unstable broadband connections? How do you... According to one of my teachers, one of my teachers, naghanap siya ng, naghanap po siya ng, ng place po na strong ang internet connections doon. Hindi, hmm. paano sa mga bata? Ang sa mga bata naman is only suggesting na wag lang muna mga video presentation at iba kasi hindi kaya ng kanilang internet na load po, sir. Yun ang mga, yun ang mga challenges nila. Uh, sabi ko sa kanila, i-present ko ito sa Senado upang makita nila ano talaga ang problema during the online classes. Sige, sir, we'll, we'll go back to you again. I have some questions because kayo yun on the ground. Eh. But I'll, I'll go back after uh, listening to the other uh, resource persons. Uh, Mr. Thank you. thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Employee of the National Association of Public Secondary School Head. Sir? Yeah. Yes. Paul Senator Gatsayam, magandang umaga po. Yes, any reaction po? Magandang umaga po sa alam. Meron po. Ang totoo po, ako po ay nagpasa na ng constitution paper, magkaugnayan po dito sa inyong Senate Resolution number 391. Ang bigyang puntos ko lang po ay pasiglahin po natin ang pagpapatupad the uh, Republic Act 9155, otherwise known as Governance of Basic Education. Kasi ito po ang kailangan sa panahon ngayon sa iwan ng bayanihan. 
ang bawat para lang po ay meron po tinatawag na school governance. Atay po sa uh, uh, school-based management na kung saan katulong po natin ang lahat ng stakeholders at lahat po ay nangangailangan na pagtulong-tulungan natin sa ngayon ang learning continuity. Hindi po kakayanin ng paaralan lamang. Hindi rin kakayanin kung mga magulang lamang o kung ng barangay. Hindi na po po pwede ngayon yung ating sinasabing one size fits all. Kinakailangan po fit for purpose. Batay sa pangangailangan at titularidad ng bawat paaralan na kung saan makapagpapatuloy ng pag-aaral ang mga kabataan. Ang School Governing Council po natin ay isang epektibo na istruktura na ngayon naman po ay umiiral na sa lahat ng mga paaralan. Nandiyan po ang Pangulo ng General PTA. Nandiyan po ang Pangulo ng ating student government. Nandiyan po ang Pangulo ng iba't ibang samahan na tumutulong sa paaralan. Nandiyan din po ang Pangulo ng ating alumni association at ng iba pa pong mga civic leaders. Kaya yan po ay isang magandang istruktura na dapat gawin natin epektibo. Matay naman po sa RA 7160, otherwise known at local government code, mahalaga po ng state and education fund ay ito din natin bilang suporta para sa lahat ng munisipyo at mga lungsod. Na siya po ay makatutulong kung sakali po na magkakaroon tayo ng special support fund for education in emergencies. Na bagaman po hindi ito direktamente yung pinabanggit ng Republic Act 7160, dapat pong marapatin ng local school board ng special education fund ay maglagay ng pondo na pwede tawagin support fund for education and emergencies. Ganun din po ang inaasahan natin sa pambansang pamahalaan na magkaroon din ng support fund for for education and emergencies bilang ayuda sa lahat ng ating mga magulang at mga kabataan na hirap na hirap sa buhay. Ito po ay matutulungan natin una sa pamamagitan ng pagsuporta po sa tinatawag nating online learning bagaman mga 22% almost 40% ang may access sa internet. Sa makatuwid po, hindi lamang po ang online education ang pwedeng gawin. Narapag po na ang distance education, ang ating pagtuunan ng pansin para matugunan ang pangangailangan ng halos pitumpong bahagdan ng mga mag-aaral. Na yan po sa pagtutulungan ng ating barangay, ng ating mga magulang ay ating maitutulong. Ganun din po sa ating pambansang pamahalaan. Mahalaga po na matutukan natin yung umiiral po nating for peace. Meron na pong pondo yan at may baseline data na po tayo. Maaari po bang dagdagan natin ang pondo ng for peace at merong bahagi na line item na gagamitin lamang nila para po doon sa pag-aaral at kalusugan ng kanilang mga anak. Nagdagang pondo po sa for peace. Ang dapat pong bigyan ng tulong para sa connectivity ay hindi mga bata lang at hindi mga gusto. Bawat household, meron na po tayo na baseline data kung ilang household meron sa buong Pilipinas. Yan po ang dapat bigyan natin ng ayuda, may kaugnayan sa learning continuity. Hindi lamang po sa pamamagitan ng radyo, hindi lamang po sa pamamagitan ng telebisyon, hindi lamang po sa pamamagitan ng internet, o hindi lalong-lalo na sa pamamagitan ng learning modules. Alam niyo po, ang, ang learning modules or competency-based instruction ay naaangkop sa mga taong nakababasa at nakauunawa. For independent readers po, ang modules or competency-based sa mga tuwid, dito papasok ang tulong ng mga magulang. Magamal po ang mga magulang ay hindi rin nakapag-aral at walang kakayanan na alalaya ng kanilang mga anak. Maaari po na makipag-ugnayan 
ang kanyang advisor o ang kanyang teacher sa mga bata. Kaya dyan po papasok, bakit kailangan bigyan ng pondo para sa learning continuity ang mga guro? Sapagat sila po makikipagugnayan. Bakit kailangan bigyan ng pondo ang bawat household para sa learning continuity? Dahil sila rin po makikipagugnayan. Bakit kailangan bigyan ang mga bata ng ayuda para sa learning continuity? Dahil sila rin po ang makikibahagi para sa patuloy na pagkatatutor. Ang direksyon po, hindi lamang po teaching and learning. Ang mahalagang matutukan ay ang learning batay po sa learner-centered concept. So dalawa po ang pwedeng panggalingan ng pondo ng Spatial Education Fund at ang ating pong pondo ng gobyerno sa pamamagitan ng MOOE na gagamitin sa learning continuity at ganun din po ang mga ayuda ng iba't ibang mga stakeholder sa isang pamayanan. Kung yan po'y may sasakatuparan, masusunod po ang sinasabi ng aming kalihim na Secretary Briones na tuloy ang pag-aaral, tuloy ang pagkatatuto at tuloy ang pagunlad ng bansa. Uh, marami pong salamat, ginoong tagapang ulo at ganun po sa lahat din ang ating mga senador at sa lahat po ng mga resource person na nakibahagi sa talakayan ngayong umaga. Maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you, thank you po. Uh, Mr. Cabrera of the Public Schools District Supervisors Association. Uh, magandang uh, tanghali po sa lahat ng mga may pakialam sa ngalan po ng edukasyon. Magandang okay. tanghali po, Senator okay. Rochelian. Naririnig na po? Papa, we can hear you. Kami po ang mga district supervisors. Kami po ang mga district supervisors, ang aming pangunahing gawain ay mag-supervise ng instruction, pagmamasid ng implementasyon ng curriculum, at iyong pagmamasid sa governance and admin function ng mga unong guro. At gusto ko pong maging hindi formal ang aking mga inputs sa parang hugot. Ang unang hugot po, hindi tayo ganun kalakas sa internet. Na makatwid, I will bank on the data of uh, Senator Gatchalian na pupunta po tayo sa modular approach. Pagdating po sa modular approach, nag-compute na po ako ng impact ng expenses sa walong subject po na gagawing module ng isang guro sa isang linggo pa lamang at imumultiply po ng pitong weeks sa isang quarter, ito po ay aabot ng 336 pesos. 336 sa isang yugto pa lang o first quarter. Kung i-compare po natin ang MOE allotment na paaralan, sa unang yugto pa lamang po, on the very first quarter, ubus na po ang pondo ng tao ng pondo ng eskwelahan. Kaya po kung patuloy na gagawa tayo ng modules, hindi po ito feasible as to school MOE's budget. Kaya po, ito na ang nakikita nating impact sa modular. Mas magasus po ang modular kung import po, compare po natin sa online. Second po, capability and availability of parents, guardians, as home teacher. Tama po si Senator Talentino, sinong magulang ang mahusay magturo ng beginning reading sa primary grades kung ito ay modular? At sa marami sa ating kababayan, na hindi kayang online. Sa mga katwid, paano natin marirealize yung pagtuturo ng pagbabasa sa unang primary grades? Pangatlo, nais kong ibigay sa inyo kung anong magiging repercussion pag nagkaroon tayo ng homeschooling. Bilang isang magulang, bilang isang nagpapaaral, ang laki po ng kuryente na kalalabasan ng ating homeschooling. In other words, malaki pong gastos ang naka-front uh, 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 naka sa ating mga magulang kung paano nila ibabudget yung kuryente. At ang apat ko, kauli ito pong isyu ng papaano i-assess ang learners samantalang ang magulang ang nagtuturo. Hindi po katulad ng face-to-face -face na talagang makikita mo kung ano ang galaw ng bata at yung performance ng bata. So yun lang po ang inputs ng mga supervisors sa ating 
basic education as to on COVID. Maraming salamat po. Mr. Cabrera, uh, maganda yung mga punto nyo. In fact, these are on the ground points, no? Especially assessment. Yes, In fact, yun yun ang unang yes. nasa isip ko. But sa inyong uh, pagkakaintindi, how do you assess the child? Pagdating po sa higher grades, kaya po yun. Sa higher grades, yung mga readers na from grade 3 and up, depending on the output of the modules na ibibigay namin. So right now, in City of San Fernando, Pampanga, we are now on the second week ng pag-prepare ng modular. Piniprint na po namin at kaya po namin. Ang inisip lang po yung primary grades, yung kinder grade 1 and 2, na hindi pa po readers yan. Okay, and uh, so ano ang uh, ano ang course of action nyo? I just want to know, no, kung on the ground ano ang ginagawa nyo for to to uh, address this issue. Kaya po ang gusto kong makita na yun, gagawa ng programa yung mga reading specialist sa national and international level na magbigay sila ng ganitong training sa ating mga kaguruhan. Dahil ito na ang maging realidad kung paano natin tuturo ang reading sa on distance learning. So, ganun po ang aking rekomendasyon. Thank you, thank you. And you're saying also kulang ang inyong uh, budget? Opo, maliwanag po. Dahil nag-compute na po kami uh, senators na ang kaya lang po ng eskwelahan para mag-produce, mag-print ng learning self-learning kit under the school budget, apat na pages po. Apat na pages lamang. Eh, lumilitaw po, ang minimum na piniprint namin ngayon ay walong pahina hanggang 15 bawat subject. And we, ate, we have 8 subjects. So dito na papasok ang local government? Opo. At sa local government po, dyan po papasok yung subsidy kung ang kung, kung gusto nila ay mga risograph. Kasi po sa school level, ang kaya lang nila ay mga printers. Bawal po yung capital outlay sa pagpapurchase ng, uh, sa MOE. Thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Cabrera. Uh, we also have Miss um, Astrologo of the uh, Philippine Public School Teachers Association of the Philippines. Ma'am uh, Astrologo, I'm the participants to this um, hearing. The yes. Public School Teachers Association is in full support of the plans, programs, and directions of the Department of Education. Okay, okay, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman, and the participants of this meeting. Uh, the Public School Teachers Association is, of course, in, in full support of the plans, programs, and directions of the Department of Education, under, of course, the brilliant leadership of the Honorable Education Secretary. Secretary Liling Briones, while we also acknowledge the issues and the availability of internet connectivity, level of preparedness of our education forces, and the likes, we are of the position that as we go along, everything's gonna fall in its proper per perspective, with of course the full support of the government and other stakeholders. In the end, we can probably adapt this distance. For a long haul. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and again, good morning. Thank you, thank you. Um, we're also joined by, uh, I'll just skip a topic, no, because I understand the Attorney Arab needs to uh, uh, leave, but uh, we also want to hear from our private schools um, the uh, on the implementation of the uh, LCP and also some updates. So, Attorney Estrada, you're recognized. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, and to the honorable members of, of the committee. I just would like to uh, make a short presentation uh, on behalf of the private uh, education sector, uh, Mr. Chair, and to our honorable members of the committee and to our secretaries present. Um, this is the, uh, I'll just present uh, very quickly uh, uh, the uh, impact of COVID-19 on the private education sector, and then uh, move uh, directly to the um, key considerations for reopening of our schools. We'll also present uh, a few examples, also international examples on the remote learning requirements, and also observance of health and safety protocols 
in the schools. And then uh, lastly, our uh, main uh, slides on the sharing of our perspectives on the urgent and near-term policy changes and funding requests to our uh, to our legislature. So very quickly, we just would like to to tell everyone that uh, several countries around the world has opened up, uh, started to open up the schools. So you see here, yung pungkula, ito yung mga countries that uh, that remain closed, uh, the, the schools closed. Yung pung uh, yellow, ito po yung countries that started to reopen, both uh, using face-to-face -face and remote learning. And then the green are the countries that uh, use mostly face-to-face -face learning. So sa atin po, like most countries, we are implementing a phased approach in the uh, reopening of our schools. So yung pong uh, yellow na check, yan po yung uh, katulad natin ng mga schools in other countries where uh, the uh, opening is uh, is ongoing, preparations for the opening is ongoing. And uh, yun, in terms of the modes to be used, I think uh, right now uh, it is clear that uh, when we open the schools, the uh, modality that will be used will all be on the remote modalities and no face-to-face -face learning until the uh, the uh, uh, vaccine has been found. Next. All right. Now, um, of course, the key consideration is the uh, the health and safety of our students. But as already mentioned, I think earlier. The uh, evidence linking between the school opening and the transmission of the virus to children is still uh, inconclusive. For example, in some other countries, you see here on the left side of the slides, uh, researchers suggest that uh, there's little evidence to link the increased cases from the school opening. However, in other countries, there, it's, it's the opposite. Um, there's a research on the transmission of cases through schools through opening of schools and the transmission uh, to vulnerable children. Nevertheless, while we uh, while we are uh, of course mindful of the uh, health risks and the making the uh, necessary health protocols, uh, it is also suggested by uh, I think a lot of experts that prolonged closures of schools tend to have uh, negative social and economic impact not only to the students but the, the entire education sector. Now I'd like to zero in on our private education sector in terms of the economic and social impact. The short-term impact for us is looking uh, directly on affected students. We account to around 6.2 million students from elementary up to college and around 410,000 employees. Sila po yung affected ngayon, directly affected until now since the lockdown. The long-term impact on students is that uh, according to Experts, I think this is from ADB study and National University of Singapore, a drop in future earning potential for the students if this if they skip a year or if, if there is a prolonged uh, disruption in the school opening or in the school year, and that uh, it equates to 10% uh, in additional earnings for every year of delay. In so far as the social impact, of course, the basic needs of the vulnerable students are not satisfied, especially in terms of learning. And there's this negative impact on mental health of students while they remain locked up at home. There's also the, this uh, worry about uh, straining further the public education system because of the fear of the great switch or massive switch of the private school students. Around 30 to 50 percent of our current enrollment are considering to move to the public education sector if there will be no government intervention in terms of policy and economic assistance. So we're looking at around 2.5 million students if we maintain the status quo until the uh, school opening, meaning if there is no uh, forthcoming government assistance to our students. I'd like to, uh, to present a snapshot of the private education sector. In the Philippines, the private schools form a larger part of the education sector. Ito po yung complementarity a participation or role of private schools. For us in the higher education sector, 50% of the students are in the private colleges and universities. And uh, in the basic education, enrollment accounts to 16% in the private schools. Mga nasa 4 million po, if we're talking about basic education. 4 million po ang studyante natin sa private schools. In terms of employment, teachers, faculty, and staff, 
30% po ng employment sa schools ay nasa private sector. So around 500,000 including in non-teaching personnel. Now, there is uh, also this concern on the uncertainty around the face-to-face -face reopening in terms of, of preparation of the schools and also the readiness of the parents and of course the capabilities of the students. So this is how it, it looks like now on in terms of school opening for basic education as we know prior to june 1st uh, opening was not allowed except for higher education uh, those who are still uh, having their continuing uh, school year or academic year 2019-2020 but uh, june 1st to august 31st will be allowed to reopen our schools but definitely no no face to face and even september 1st onwards i think the uh, policy uh, already uh, uh, manifested or communicated by the IATF and the president is that there will still be no face-to-face -face classes until the vaccine has been found. Now we we like to present in the, in the next slide. We like to present the uh, specific uh, economic and uh, social impact. Uh, so based on the survey conducted by the Copopeya, and we also uh, extrapolated the data from the Department of Education and CHED. Catholic schools. Ito po yung aming uh, sample na uh, survey or population. No? Uh, so, so in our survey, around 500 uh, schools were asked. This represents uh, 765,000 students and around 33,000 employees. For the CAP, these are uh, mostly basic basic education. Around the same number of, of, of schools responded with 818,000 students represented in those schools and 48,000 employees. Now, the result of this survey um, is as follows. Now, 30% as of April po ito, so 30% of students had no access to flexible learning materials, either physically or online. Yan po ang sagot ng mga estudyante dun sa survey na eskwalahan. And 17% of the students could not complete their school year through flexible learning. No? So for those schools with, with ongoing academic year at the time. And 26% of teachers and staff received no payment during the quarantine. This was during the first uh, ECQ prior to the extension. And 20% of the schools were forced to end the academic year early because the, they were unable to offer flexible learning or online. So. They were forced to end it around the third quarter, uh, at the start of the third quarter for the basic education. 35% of learning was synchronous for those who continued. 30% uh, was on synchronous and 65% was asynchronous or self-study. And 80% of the schools that we surveyed said the time that they may not be able to pay their employees and absorb the payroll until and beyond August. No? Um, given the disruption of the school year last year since March and the delayed school opening. Now, this is the very um, critical uh, slide that we'd like to present to our legislators and our honorable officials. This is our um, urgent policy uh, requests, policy changes, and the funding needs. Ito pong nasa leftmost column. Ito po yung aming, uh, we think that uh, this can be addressed without legislation because this can be uh, addressed by our administrative agencies, CHED, uh, DepEd, and TESDA. And then on the, on the mid, at the middle uh, are our funding needs. Uh, some of, of, of the uh, funding needs here are based on existing laws already. It probably needs just an increase in the budget. And on the third column are uh, near-term policy changes which require legislation for stability of policy moving uh, forward post ECQ. So let me just go briefly to our ur urgent policy changes. Number one, po, Senator Wynne, is that uh, we hope that uh, education be included in the category of essential services and sectors for the purpose of implementing social amelioration packages. Because uh, as you have mentioned, number two po kami sa critically affected and number four, uh, with jobless uh, staff and personnel. And yet, uh, Senator, I think that banggit ko na po ito in previous hearings, hindi po kami nakatanggap. I mean, when, when I say kami, yung po mga school personnel, hindi po sila nakatanggap ng uh, SAP under the DOLE and also under the Small Business Wage Subsidy of the DOF. 
simply because we are not included in the priority sectors who are supposed to receive the uh, amelioration packages. So hopefully, masama na po kami. And uh, na, yung pong number two, bullet number two, related to number six, this is uh, addressed uh, to our uh, honorable officials at the Department of Education and the, the CHED. But this is a developing issue. Uh, kahapon po, nagkaroon ng uh, TWG, a public consultation on policies on flexible learning with the uh, Commission on Higher Education. Yung pong sa TEP at naman, we are still waiting. But uh, in all of this, we are hoping, nakasama po yung mga schools natin, especially those in the regions, we are hoping for a more inclusive developmental and less regulatory policy environment for the schools to transition smoothly to flexible learning options. Kasi po, while we are thinking of the content and the platforms, uh, a lot of the schools also worry about the administrative uh, uh, processes, no? simply uh, moving towards flexible learning options. So, uh, meron po mga regions that uh, in, in the DepEd that require different uh, uh, submissions, no? And uh, we hope that it can be uh, um, done in a uniform manner and again in a less regulatory manner. Because yung pong flexible learning options ngayon is not a matter of privilege or alternative to uh, formal education like before. So na po is out of uh, urgency and uh, necessity because of the national health emergency. So we hope that uh, regulation here will be in the sense of support to our private schools. And then yung, yung three, four, and five, they're all related to uh, flexible learning options, which again, are these are developing issues, allowing us to, uh, to redesign our curriculum. And also, yung pung number five, uh, to, to repurpose existing educational funds, such as the Higher Education Development Fund under the CHED Act, the SEF, yung pung Special Education Fund. Kadalasan po ito ginagamit lang naman talaga sa mga uh, uh, local school boards. Pero we also feel that there are other local governments that have excess, which may also uh, would also want to help our uh, stakeholders in the private sector, but they feel that they are barred because of existing policies and laws and resolutions of their localities. Yung pong number seven, uh, gusto ko rin po sanang i-highlight this has become a major concern in some regions because there's a conflict between the national government policy in terms of school opening and the, uh, and the uh, local government. No? So, isa, may isa pong region, nagpasa po sila ng uh, resolution prohibiting school opening in whatever mode, including online and remote uh, learning delivery modes, which conflicts, of course, the IATF pronouncement, which says uh, that allows the schools to reopen, but not face-to-face. -face, no? So, they're facing a dilemma there. Yung mga schools, they're not being allowed to, to reopen. So, ito pong funding needs, Nabanggit din po kanina ni Yusek and Sevilla, so we're, we're working on expansion of, uh, despite the cut in the budget, kami naman po, we're pushing for more, uh, more, for more uh, reach of the existing government subsidies and programs under the GASPE and the RA 10931 uh, for, for college. So kanina po nabanggit, uh, binawasan po yung budget, but they're working on, on bringing it back. But I'd like to also to inform the committee that uh, these are the numbers who are of students who are not uh, who have not been able uh, who have not, who have not been reached no, by the government assistance uh, prior to the COVID-19. So, sa elementary po, 1.2 million students in the private schools are not receiving any government assistance simply because the ESC is not uh, implemented in the elementary education. Around 343,000 for junior high ang hindi po kasali sa uh, uh, ESC, at sa senior high naman po, maliit na lang 53,000. Sa college, uh, ang, ang numbers po around 1.4 to 1.9 million ang hindi po kasama sa TES. But we feel that uh, now because of the COVID, kasama na po sila sa economically uh, adversely affected, hindi, na lang, hindi lang din po yung mga current beneficiaries. So we're hoping uh, to, to expand the subsidies to them uh, kahit po fixed amount at uh, hindi naman yung uh, kung ano po yung amount uh, under the existing government subsidies. We tried to work this out under the Bayanihan Act and also under the PESA version of the bill at the House of Representatives. Uh, but unfortunately, the uh, Congress has uh, adjourned CNDA and, uh, uh, and, and, I, and, I, and I believe that this is still on the table, but we just we'll just have to, uh, to wait and 
and uh, be hopeful. Uh, yung pong ating wage and salary assistance for our school personnel, we're hoping that uh, if there's a next wave of subsidy, masama na po sila, as I've said earlier, hindi po sila naging beneficiary sa kahit saan pong uh, program, whether it's the Dole or the EOF uh, wage subsidy. Yung pong incentives for banks, uh, well, uh, it, naghihintay din po kami dito, this will also help uh, a lot of the schools to bridge their, their immediate funding needs. Meron po tayong land bank, uh, study now, pay later, na announce na rin po yan. Uh, but a lot of the schools feel that this is not what they need because uh, the borrower is the school. Ang risk po ng, uh, ng, ng collection is with the school at sila po magbabayad ng loan pero yun po ang nakabangga sa promissory notes and, ng, ng mga parents and students. And uh, that has been a problem for, for a lot of the schools no? that, uh, because of the inability of the parents to pay. Lalo na po ngayon, we recognize the uh, economic uh, effect on them. But uh, I think ganun din po, umay, umiwas po sa risk yung land bank. At sinabi nga po na because there's a, there will be a problem in recollection, dapat po schools na lang ang humiram at sila ang magkolekta. Which a lot of the schools find also to be uh, uh, unacceptable. Now in terms of the uh, ipong uh, technology, uh, plays a lot uh, of... Um, place a lot of, uh, of uh, in the, in the uh, major consideration to reopen. So ito po yung, um, based on our survey, ito po yung uh, uh, impact on technology. 35% of the students had no access to stable internet. 30% of the students had no access to educational materials, both online and offline. And 50% are struggling to access online learning material due to connectivity. For the teachers, 60% are skeptical of or resistant to conducting online classes. And 60% of schools are not able to provide training for teachers to conduct online classes. So we, we uh, have this, uh, we included in our request for funding needs, those that would subsidize the um, putting up of cyber infrastructure and also training and re, re upskilling of our teachers for technology and the government incentives for collaboration with telco companies and the government funding to supply technology. Uh, meron po kaming uh, kahapon po, I think uh, in one of the webinars, we found out uh, that the DICT has this uh, national broadband program which provide, uh, provided free access to state universities and colleges. Senator Win, we hope, uh, because we've been uh, also appealing for this, uh, sana makapag-provide po ng access also to private educational institutions. Sana po masama po kami sa programa na yun kahit a certain portion of our uh, educational institutions lang uh, with this government program on uh, providing free Wi-Fi access in educational institutions. Based po dun sa report kahapon, as around 80 to 90 percent na po ng state universities and colleges were given the free access to Wi-Fi. Uh, we hope uh, kahit uh, siguro a portion of that lang sa ating mga um, existing uh, private education institutions. Now, I'd like to show here, ito lang po just a comparative study based on uh, on the uh, country's uh, income, uh, yung pong uh, ginagamit na modalities. You can see here the combination of TV, radio, online and online and broadcast and fully online modalities. May kita po ninyo yung lower income, they use more, more of the combination of TV and online and broadcast. And those in the higher income classes, they use mostly online. So, ito po yung aming uh, funding needs in summary. Uh, nabanggit ko po kanina, we, we tried to, uh, to, uh, uh, to, to, to push for our funding needs to the Arise and also the Bayinian to Recovery as one act of the Senate. And thank you very much for providing us the, the voice there in the platform. Unfortunately, hindi na po umabot. Uh, but uh, andyan na po lahat yun. Uh, there are also some laws that we think andyan na po, they just need to be implemented in the, in a wider scale and be uh, funded uh, to, to reach more students, like the Open Distance Learning Act. Pero po ito ay sa tertiary education, a tertiary uh, education students lang po hindi po kasama yung basic education. Ito po sana batas na to that was passed in 2017, if I'm not mistaken, uh, would have provided the uh, subsidy for laptops, gadgets for our students. Also, including the uh, building of cyber infrastructure in the schools. 
Um, here are our near-term policy changes. Uh, last na po ito. Uh, adjustments uh, in the DepEd, Jet Test, and PRC regulations to provide more flexibility and autonomy to modify curriculum and operations. This will uh, this will actually uh, survive the the, uh, the the COVID, the pandemic, because we think this this will be the new normal. So we hope that the policies will not be on a short-term basis, but will have more stability in the future. And policy-based fiscal report in terms of tax breaks or subsidies. Uh, siguro po, uh, ito po ay malaking tulong sa amin, kung, uh, for the, especially for the tax breaks. Kung hindi man po magkakaroon ng direct subsidy, malaking tulong po sa amin yan if we receive tax breaks. Investment in technology and infrastructure. And the scholarship and grants for students to increase enrollment in the private school and decongest the public education sector and define criteria for reopening of face-to-face -face classes subject to government protocols and um, covid prevailed and implementation of safety precautions when the time permits. When and how to reopen schools is one of the top, toughest and most sensitive uh, decisions, uh, but uh, we will submit a copy of this presentation. Meron po dito mga studies from other countries on what, how they implemented it and how they are planning to move gradually to face-to-face -face learning. So ito pong slide na yon shows that no, in other countries. So they have changes in their operation. They also have uh, protection in, in entry and, then, and in hallways of the schools and the uh, protection inside the classroom. So um, hindi na rin po natin kailangan mag-reinvent ng wheel. Uh, ito po yung mga examples that we can pick up from other jurisdictions. Should we also feel that we need to plan um, whenever it is permitted for us to reopen the schools for face-to-face -face learning. So in summary, it pulit yung aming uh, uh, mga appeal po uh, uh, sa atin pong legislators, Senator Wynn, our urgent policy changes, our urgent funding needs, and the near-term policy changes and funding needs to provide stability. And uh, lastly, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we really feel, uh, thank you for providing us the opportunity this, uh, this day, today, this morning. And, uh, you know, as, as, as schools uh, slowly reopen, uh, it is really the sentiment of a lot of the private schools that slowly doors of opportunities and assistance are also closing on them. So we hope, uh, Senator, um, may pagkasa pa po sana at matagal-tagal pa naman. Meron pang time, no, before the school opening. We hope that... Uh, uh, we can have the uh, policy and economic interventions not only to the schools, not only to the private uh, educational institutions, but to our school communities, which include our students, especially our affected school personnel. Maraming salamat po sa inyo lahat. Thank you, Attorney Estrada. Well, on the topic of yung land bank uh, na pautang, I saw that on the news. Uh, to be honest, I don't believe in study now, pay later. Uh, I believe in study now and um, that's it so time and memorial that study now pay later is going to fail uh, program even in the streets so if you really want to help the students uh, we just give grants period uh, that's my uh, um, my analysis on that no so and more so um, of course medyo Medyo why is rin tong land bank nasa yung risk sa mga private school. No? So more so medyo parang uh, uh, nakawawa tuloy yung private school kasi yung collecting agent ngayon private schools. But uh, having said that, you mentioned also earlier that some LGUs are not allowing school opening whether online, distant, uh, modality. Yes, uh, Senator. Senator, okay lang po ba if you want to ask further on that? And dito po si Father Jobert Pilyasis. I think it is in his region, sa region 10, <laughs> if he's okay po. Uh, it's not for the it's... LGUs to uh, decide on when the school opening, no? Um, uh, unless they can uh, prove to Ayataf that they are in a uh, much graver situation compared to the rest of the country. Uh, but uh, I don't hear of anything, unless you Senator Marcos have, but I don't hear of anything that uh, LGUs are preventing uh, schools, no, whether public or private, to open more so using uh, uh, the distance learning modality. But yes, can you, anyone who wants to 
uh, give us on that. Uh, Secretary, ma'am, ma'am Liling. Uh, uh. Uh, if you are referring to region 10, um, we have a very six. high six. I think there's six. a six in Calibo, in Aklan. Region six po pala, sorry, not region 10. <laughs> so region 10, uh, we have a high degree also of, of enrollment kasi umabot na tayo ng 36%. Initially, Initially, uh, some local government said that they would not allow schools to open because of, of uh, the challenges, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, I wrote them personally, and I'm scheduled to meet them tomorrow. Yung leaders ng four associations of local government, yung nasa ulap, the governors, the, uh, the mayors, and uh, other officials, yung apat na big organizations, and then. Uh, their, their, their trend is, of course, to, to support because they don't want their constitution, their constituency to be left behind. Kasi responsibility din nila. Ayaw nilang maiwan na. Uh, and we made it clear to them that uh, uh, yung mga individuals, kung Region 6 ang sinasabi ninyo, uh, I wrote personally to uh, one of the local government officials and also in... Uh, Region 6 and one, two or three provinces. Hindi, hindi pwedeng hindi sila mag-alaw. Um, uh, that's very clear. And the, Senate, the good senator has already um, pointed that out. Now, but if there is such an instance, uh, please inform us. Because otherwise, the original director will inform us of what is happening. Kasi every day, nagre-report sila. Tomorrow, I'm meeting them also. And um, while I'm at it, uh, uh, Honorable Chair, I have um, listened to this presentation and uh, time and again, I've always expressed um, support and advocacy for the, uh, for the role of private sector schools uh, in uh, education, especially in their contributions to basic education. Kana sa constitution yan, ay mandato yan. Ang uh, kami sa DepEd, we were asked to help the private schools, uh, lalo na yung walang contracts. Um, so they had two months of summer vacation, wala silang bayad. And so they were looking forward to uh, bayanihan. And I have, um, nearly a month ago, I talked with the, with the Secretary of um, NEDA, uh, who is uh, Carl Chu, uh, formerly of the Department of Finance. Dahil kung hindi sila ma specifically identified sa bayanihan, hindi daw mapasali. So I asked kung pwede doon sa small, ano, small uh, uh, economic activities like the small schools. No? And, and the reply of Carl Chua at that time was to give us a list of those who are, uh, who are proposed as beneficiaries. Names, salaries, and so on. Kasi gusto nila real, lists of real people kasi nag avoid ng mga ghost list and so on. Uh, I, until now, I have not received that list. And I have been in communication with AAP and uh, also through my undersecretary na yan ang hinihingi na listahan kasi we are hoping na makahabor. This is who have only 10-month uh, contracts, uh, wala silang summer pay and so on. Kailangan. And, and we have been advocating for that the help teachers din, din sila. So I'm waiting for that uh, list of, of people, their bank account numbers, uh, the way it is done for, for Bayanihan also para matrack ka agad yung... Uh, and importante para nila Carl at sa DOF, they have to know how much it will be because it will be about for uh, one one tranche or one season of Bayanihan, it might be about 2.4 billion. Na kung there are already uh, teachers who are receiving assistance at this time. So sabi namin, ah, hindi na still esama, para lang double counting. Yan ang hinihintay ko because I will pass it on to Karchua para malaman nila and, and then we can uh, strengthen our, our plea. Now as to the other... Uh, the other proposals, uh, we have, uh, as I said, 
um, we always have expressed sympathy for the uh, role of the private uh, sector institutions in education and the complementarity aspect. Because many of us uh, uh, people in government and elsewhere ha have gone through that uh, that mode, including myself. My uh, elementary, my high school was in a private school, and my college, private school, and then. Uh, I moved over to UP for graduate uh, and postgraduate studies and abroad, et cetera, et cetera. And it is very useful. Uh, it's a very useful exposure. And uh, uh, we cannot uh, tolerate uh, uh, banishing the private sector education uh, systems, uh, schools from, from the face of the Philippine educational system. Uh, uh, the Constitution will surely uh, uh, penalize us for that. Uh, now, yung sa modular, kanina na bring up yung modular systems na which were also uh, proposed by some of our principals and our supervisors, will bring up their concerns uh, tomorrow. The management committee, kasama na yung lahat ng mga regional uh, directors, kama yung punto na kung mag-modular ka, it's really going to be very much more expensive Let's say you print the modules eh, uh, and the materials, uh, it will be much more expensive than, uh, than the online. Uh, so my own expense involved yan. But uh, kaya nga, kasama yan sa blended approach, yung modular systems, which the two uh, officials from DepEd are also, uh, also uh, proposing. Now, so SEF, uh, Mr. Chair, Honorable Chair, we are aware that there are pressures also from local government officials to modify the uh, requirements for SEF, yung funding. Uh, ito, of course, as we all know, this is a national tax. This is part 1% of real property tax paid by real uh, property uh, owners. And ang uh, nagdi-determine ito are three institutions, as far as I know, it would be the Department of the Budget, uh, Civil Service Commission, uh, and uh, the Department of Education. So, ang sabi ko dito sa mga local government officials na kung uh, it will work nila, we, we look again at the law, kasi uh, this is covered by law. As I said, this is a national tax, part of the national tax. And uh, uh, revisit the list, kasi mayroong listahan ang DBM ng approved uh, uh, expenditures for um, to be funded by SEF and take into consideration yung, yung current uh, yung current uh, concerns no so um, all of these uh, all of these issues um, we we are a little familiar with but we will be bringing them up and continue continually uh, assessing them of course yung sa schooling yung assessment of, we are developing assessment tools. Dahil iba na ang, ang style ngayon kasi they have to be assessed, the learners have to be assessed as they move from one uh, uh, grade uh, level to, to another. And so I'd like to assure uh, the Honorable Chair and uh, all our uh, advocates and supporters that uh, uh, we are looking at these problems even as we move on and get, uh, get ready, but it should not stop us. Now, on the matter of the schooling, that region, region 6, I'm not aware that uh, uh, there is a local government official. Dahil my commitment now from the four big associations, and uh, ipakita mo nga uh, yung uh, mga, ano, na mga local government units who have expressed clearly, they have expressed it and support, including region 6. Uh -oh yung mga uh, local government ano <clears throat> and they're cooperating say we need them uh, uh, we need them very uh, badly at the level of the school especially in locating yan uh, those yun ang mga logo ng mga schools and there are messages and uh, photographs which you will submit also to the senate and again, tomorrow I'll be meeting, and the afternoon I'll be meeting also the Mancom, uh, our own Mancom. Yan, mga, 
uh, nagko-commit for learners and teachers. And they're also expressing uh, yung sa private sector na ang request na in the exam and revisit yung SEF. And we have no objection to that as long as it's uh, with the cooperation of the three agencies involved, including the ING, of course, the mga local governments. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Secretary. And uh, just uh, Attorney Arap, and I, I know that you have some members of uh, Cocopea there. Uh, in the in Bayanihan too, we uh, Senator Recto uh, proposed a lot of uh, uh, particularly for teachers non-teaching personnel, and also students. Uh, that is greatly debated, especially by the well, uh, Most of the senators, in fact, the, the, the entire Senate agrees that uh, we need to support the teachers and the teaching personnel of private schools, as well as the students going into private schools. Um, we do acknowledge that um, uh, the, the pandemic caused a lot of um, disturbance in the income, especially of our OFWs. And marami sa ating OFWs sa private schools nag aaral talaga. And uh, that's why we proposed um, some uh, amelioration program in Bayanihan too that will go straight to um, the private schools, teachers, non-teaching staff, and also the students. Uh, that will be debated, and uh, hopefully we get some positive news on that. With that, um, thank you, Attorney Arap. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, we have uh, some best practices uh, with us um, uh, in support of the learning continuity plan, some LGUs. Um, pledged uh, support in terms of equipment, in terms of uh, uh, funding, and we invited uh, two LGUs. One is Pasig City, and the other one is our favorite uh, city, favorite namin ni Yusek and Civilieto, of course, uh, Valenzuela City. And uh, we'll call on uh, our local superintendent, si Dr. Uh, uh, Zurbano, to present Valenzuela City's uh, initiative uh, in line with the uh, learning continuity plan. So, uh, Doc Meliton. Sir, uh, Mr. Chair, good morning. Good, up, uh, good afternoon na po. Uh, Madam Secretary po. Good afternoon to Yusek and to other senators, fellow government workers. Good afternoon po. I am Mr. Surbani from uh, SDO Valenzuela and I am here to present our plan and our initiative in a delivering distance learning modality come August 24, including our preparation uh, beginning June and onwards to August 24. So, may I share to you the Yeah, and we can see it. Uh, so the, I'm sorry, Bob. Sorry. Uh, uh, kita po yung ano yung itong distance learning sa, par sa paraang modular home-based study sa David Valenzuela. I can see it. Uh, okay po, thank you po uli. Uh, in line po with the basic education learning continuity plan provided by the David Central and the uh, guidance by our regional office, we crafted our distance learning delivery and we call it the modular home-based study in David Valenzuela. So this is a simple infographics to inform our stakeholders on how are we going to deliver the modular home-based study based on uh, the uh, basic education learning continuity plan. So as you see po, uh, crafting uh, ang DepEd Balinsuela sa panguna ng mga curriculum implementation division with the help of the teachers and the principals ay gagawa ng mga learning materials 
uh, modules, activity and learning worksheet, study guide, parents guide, etc. na naayon po sa most essential learning competencies uh, provided by DepEd. And of course, it is in coordination po with the regional CLMD office and then the central office po para po sa quality assurance. Then, we after po na magawa siya, uh, iaayos po ng mga school ang mga materials, print, printing, sorting, arranging, and packaging upang mga maging learning packets po. We just called it learning packets. Then, in the distribution phase po, ipapamahagi ang mga learning packets sa bawat mag-aaral sa iba't ibang kaparaanan. So, meron po kung pick up ng magulang, designated air sa school, or depo sa mga 3S po. And another thing po, uh, the city government of Valenzuela uh, is annually distributing bags and uh, learner's kit. Meron po kaming binibigay taon-taon ang city government. So by this time po, uh, ready na po yung kanilang uh, bags. Doon na lang po namin for grade 6, grade uh, for kinder to, to grade 6, doon po namin ilalagay yung mga madidevelop namin material. So natulong po ang city government, then it will be distributed uh, in different, uh, in different uh, modalities kung ano po yung hinihingi ng sitwasyon. Kung mas magaan po na pick up ng magulang, kung sa barangay naman po, or kung kailangan i-deliver po sa kailang mga bahay or hatid bahay ay kasama po yun sa aming pamamaraan para ma-distribute po. So learning po, isang tagawa po ang pag-aaral sa bahay. Uh, Siyempre po sa pamamagitan ng study guides, uh, both for learners and parents, sa paggabay ng magulang, guardian o nakatatandang kasama sa bahay. So ito po yung isang concern kanina na siyempre papano si magulang na hindi marunong magturo, uh, si magulang na nagtatrabaho po. So to address po that, to address that problem po, we have, kita pa po yung ano, kita po po yung screen. Nawala siya, nawala. Ano, wala po. Ah, ito po. So, yun po, sa learning po, uh, to, to address po yung issue about paano yung mga magulang na hindi naman makapagtuturo sa bata at paano yung mga magulang na nagtatrabaho ang may iwan lang ay yung lolo or lola or kung sino man yung adult po sa bahay. So, kasama po sa aming programa yung Nanay Teacher Scheme. Uh, if you remember po, for the information of everyone, uh, Nanay Teacher Scheme po is an ongoing program in Valenzuela City that was started during the time of our good senator when he was still the mayor of Valenzuela. And I believe uh, Nanay Teacher po is the brainchild of our senator. So sa Nanay Teacher po, simple lang po ang, ang framework. We help educate our parents to help us educate the children. So, uh, for a simple lang po, may mga core group po kami, parang PTA system po, pero yung no core group po, in the division level, ang katulong po namin, tinetrain po namin, and then they uh, tinetrain po nila yung mga nanay teacher sa mga schools. So, sa ngayon po, nire-restructured namin yung nanay teacher para po maka-adapt dun sa, dun sa bagong sitwasyon ngayon. Dati po kasi more on face-to-face -face training po kami. So, ngayon po, kasama sa training namin, uh, itetrain din po namin yung aming mga nanay teacher para po matulungan namin dun sa implementation uh, on the modular system po. So yun po yung isang sagot namin dun sa tanong kanina, paano yung mga nanay na ah, hindi makapagtuturo? So may mga training po kami on our part. May nihanda po kami training not just for the teachers, uh, not just may per sa parents po, meron din po and then meron kaming simulation bago mag-opening po ng klase. And then additional ano po, habang kami ay naghahanda po ng, ng uh, modules and then uh, kinukompleto po namin yung data, kasama po sa plano namin, uh, isasagawa din po ang pagtuturo sa paumagilan ng FB Live. At ang mga katanungan po, FB Live po, so simple concept po, may magtuturo teacher live, nakahook po ang mga ang mga estudyante on a particular time, particular subject po. So, actual classroom din po siya. 
At yung mga tanong, tutugon lang po ng mga guro. Then sa monitoring po namin, magkakaroon ng follow-up discussion sa mga mag sa mga guro sa pamamagitan ng virtual online classroom gamit ang free online platforms na hindi po kailangan ng mobile data subscription. Ito po yung FB Messenger Peak na pwede silang, ang teacher po ay pwedeng makipag-connect sa mga estudyante for follow-up discussion po. Kaya ito po ay design para sa mga walang internet connectivity uh, habang hindi pa po, po naayos yung system. But for the information of everybody po, the city government po, we are doing targeted approach kung paano ma-address na dito po sa letter B ng number 4 ay magkaroon kami na lahat po ay maka-access doon sa FB Live and then uh, we are running din po sa internet connectivity we are exploring possibilities po. Pero for the meantime po, ang aming default mode po ay yung module. So para matiyak po na lahat po ay may gagawin and lahat po ay merong uh, pag-aaralan pagdating po ng, ng uh, opening po. So enriching po, so maliban sa mga gamit na nasa learning packets, maaaring gamitin ang nabangkit na po, DepEd Commons, very famous. Uh, radio and TV, TV broadcasting po, uh, nakasa, nasa plano din po yun, makasama po sa plano ng regional office. At iba pang learning resources upang lalong mapalawak ang kalaman. So sa assessing po, uh, initially po ang aming target is portfolio assessment. Pero kung may mga ilalabas pa po na guidelines, ay yung po ang aming susundin. Uh, nakalagay po dyan sa mga itatakdang araw ay magkakaroon ng mga assessment na naayon sa sitwasyon upang sukatin ang kalamat at kasanayan na natutunan po ng mga mag-aaral. So sa assessment po, uh, we are still exploring bukod sa portfolio assessment, ano pa yung pwede namin magamit para po makita namin yung yung pagkatuto ng mga bata at kung ano yung intervention na pwede pa namin gawin. And then evaluating po, nakalagay din po dyan ang pagbibigay ng marka o grado ay ibabate sa pulisiya o panuntunan po na I believe po ay uh, the DepEd Central Office po ay inaayos na rin po. So, uh, isa pa po na, na ginagawa po sa amin, if I may, ano po, if I may share pa rin po, Uh, simple survey lang po ito. Go ahead. Uh, yes po. Uh, ito po slide yo. Ito po. Ah. Uh, Regarding po doon sa aming online uh, pro, uh, plan, no, plan po, so ito po kasama sa enrollment form na uh, ginagamit po ng DepEd. Doc, hindi, hindi, namin, namin, yes, hindi, namin, hindi namin makita yung... Ah, sorry po, sorry. Ah, sharing, sharing, sharing. Ah, share ko lang po. Oh, sorry po. Share content. Kita na po? Ah, kita na. Opo. Uh, in preparation po for our online approach, uh, ito po, uh, kasama po ito sa enrollment form na, na ginagawa po ng DepEd. So basically po, ito po ay as of June 9. So sa amin pong data, uh, kasi po doon sa aming on online approach plan, kakailanganin po doon at least smartphone. So, focus po kami sa smartphone. So, as of June 9 po, we have 84,966 uh, enrollment. Pero as of this morning po, umabot na po ito ng 101,969. So, 70% po ay smartphone. So, kung sakaling ganyan ito po magiging trend, ang i-workout lang po namin sa city ay around 30% o pwede pang bumaba. Uh, kung makukompleto po namin yung data. And then connectivity po, uh, according to this, 73% may connectivity, 27% ay wala. And then uh, mobile data meron po. So with this data po, we can uh, plan ahead dun po sa aming magiging approach pa to address po uh, pag na-navigate na po kami dun sa online. 
So for the meantime po, uh, plan no is lahat po sila magbibigay ng module. And then uh, sabihin po natin, uh, in preparation po nga about sa August 24 po, ito naman po ay kasama sa sa plano po ng, ng City of Valenzuela. So uh, thank you very much po for the opportunity. Thank you, thank you, Doc Meriton. And it's uh, good to hear na meron tayong 96% na merong mobile data and almost 70% na may smartphone. And I think that is the concept ng Valenzuela to tap into the smartphones. No? Dahil uh, kung Facebook Live lang naman, hindi naman mabigat yan sa pag-streaming. So uh, it, it's, it, the technology is familiar, smartphone, and the platform familiar, uh, Facebook. So... I think the innovation there is tapping into familiar concepts. All right, so thank you, the Doc Meliton, and um, see, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Al Edralin of Pasig. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing with us your best Hello. practice. Can you hear me, Mr. Chair? Yes, yes, sir. Thank you very much uh, to Senators Gachalian, Valentino, Marcos, and Vinay. Uh, the Senate Secretariat, DepEd, and Shed officials, fellow resource persons, and to everyone watching and following this video conference, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. On the outset, on behalf of Mayor V. Cosoto and the Pasigenios, thank you, Mr. Chair, and the members of the Committee on Basic Education, Arts, and Culture, and the city government of Pasig in this timely discussion on the fate of the education sector of the Philippines in the midst of this pandemic. The city government of Pasig is in solidarity with all sectors, the government as a whole, and the civil society in ensuring that public health and safety are paramount as we deal with this global crisis. Kaisa din kami sa paniniwala na dapat magpatuloy ang pag-aaral ng ating mga kabataan sa alternative learning modality sa gitna ng COVID-19. Kasama din tayo kami doon sa may mga valid reservations ng ating mga, ng, ng ating mga uh, tukol sa ating kahandaan in the shift of the other learning modalities kasama na ang resources, digital infrastructure, training ng ating mga teachers at iba pa. But despite these, your honors, tayo sa Pasig ay naghahanda kasama ang DepEd SDO headed by SDS Evalu Agustin since third week of April sa mga posibleng developments uh, na ito. In Pasig, we are looking into a combination of distance learning and blended learning approaches. And aside from giving financial support, we, the local government, are seeing a convergence of the private sector, the government, the civil society, and the PTAs uh, for this pursuit. We we need this convergence uh, now more than ever, uh, Mr. Chair. And uh, just a brief update, we are now in the process of procuring uh, the necessary tablets and laptops for our teachers and all our public school students. We are also in the process of finalizing our memorandum of agreement with several public uh, sector and civil society uh, organizations. Yung ating makasama po sa Department of Education ay kasalukuyang naghahanda ng mga materials at may mga ongoing trainings din po para sa ating mga teachers. With these notes, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honors, the city government of Pasig registers its position strongly supporting your legislative measures, particularly Senate Resolutions number 391 and 392 in calling for legislative inquiries in aid of legislation on the impact of COVID-19 on the education sector, as well as on the status of the implementation of the free internet access in public areas, respectively. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Your Honors. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, sir. And also, we're joined by uh, Ma'am Juliano Tamano of FICTAP, the Federation for International Cable TV and Telecommunications. Uh, they have some best practices to share with us uh, that they have implemented in Cotabato City. No, Ma'am? Mama Neng Tamano. 
Nandiyan po kayo. I don't think she's... Uh... Okay, but in, in any case, um, we have a few more resource persons, but I won't call them one by one. Anyone who wants to uh, 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 comment or... Uh, or or add to the discussion feel free to raise your hands um hindi ko na ho isa isa medyo marami pa tayo but uh, anyone who wants to uh, uh make some comments uh yes you sec uh, go ahead thank you very much mr chair uh the department of interior and local government interposes no objection to the resolution and as a matter of fact um we support the uh Hello? the s the you know the, the the use of the sdf Hello? funds for uh any preparation Hello? for covid 19 as a matter of fact we had a meeting yesterday with that ed and dbm on the matter um we look forward to working with the local this governments most especially on improving the it internet uh, access uh, amongst all barangays, Can you hear? we're closely working with the ICT on the matter in preparation for the mm -hmm. opening of classes on, in August, either for blended learning and others. Uh, that's all, Mr. Chair, and the department is closely monitoring on how to help further DepEd and other agencies of supporting our education. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. And I think... Uh... Uh, anyone who wants to make any more comments? Uh, uh, Mom Flora, yes. And then uh, the, uh, um, yes, League of City, the, um, Veronica. Okay. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Nadidinig niyo po? Yes, Mom Flora. We can um, hear you. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Um, nagpapasalamat kami kay sa ating uh, butihing ina ng edukasyon, ang Department of Education Secretary natin, Kaliling Briones, at sa um, mga um, uh, staff ng Executive Committee. At the same time, sa ating uh, mahal na mga senador, sa pamumuno ni Chair Gachalian, uh, Senator Lina, Binay, Senator Amy Marcos, Senator Tolentino at iba pa. Uh, gusto ko lang pong banggitin yung ilang mga uh, nais nice naming uh, sabihin sa hearing na ito. Uh, ang foremost na na consideration namin ay yung safeguarding siyempre ng health, safety and well-being ng ating mga mag-aaral, ng ating mga guro at ng ating mga non-education, uh, ng ating mga non-teaching personnel. Uh, gusto ko lang uh, i-reiterate na sa pandemic na ito, although marami sa atin ay mga nasa urban areas, um, nais nating uh, pukusan din yung ating mga nasa liblib na lugar, ang mga indigenous people natin at yung mga 3.8 Filipinos na uh, age 6 to 24 years old na out of school youth and children at, and at the same time, yung 12.8 million Filipinos from ages 31 to 59 who have not completed their basic education. Ito ay batay sa 2016 um, Poverty uh, Indicator Survey ng APIS. Ang, um, ang isang um, focus lang ng aming mga mungkahi ay tugunan natin yung uh, health and wellness ng mga guro, health and wellness ng ating mga learners, uh, yung uh, learning modalities kung paano ito uh, isusulong at paano ito magkakaroon ng uh, ay ayuda no? mula sa gobyerno, lalo na doon sa usapin ng mga technology uh, materials na kailangan sa uh, ating uh, learning modalities, mga production ng mga workbooks, etc. At ganun din po yung mga training ng teachers, training ng uh, ating mga uh, school leaders, at the same time yung training ng mga parents and other uh, para-educators na nais mag-tumulong um, ano, sa pagsusulong ng learning continuity natin sa mga bata. 
Ngayon, isang problema natin dito, yung usapin ng budget. Meron lang kaming gustong uh, banggitin din dito, na, at nabanggit na rin kanina, yung siyempre sa GAA, ang proposal po namin sana, Senator Wynn, ay uh, mag-prioritize talaga ng uh, budget sa mga important uh, needs ngayon ng education under the new normal. Kung may mga kailangan bawasan sa mga line items ng ibang mga agencies, i-contribute ito sa edukasyon. Tapos pangalawa po, gusto po namin sana ang pag-aralan ng ating mga uh, senators at mga congressmen yung um, pag uh, re align o pag, uh, pag uh, re yung allocation muna po natin pala sa debt uh, payments. Baka pwedeng i-suspend muna natin yung debt debt payments na yan at i-realign natin ito sa needs ng education natin under the new normal. At bukod po dito, siyempre, yung other sources mula sa local government units through the Special Education Fund at yung mga ira na pwedeng makontribute ng ating mga LGUs para sa needs ng education. Yun yung ilang mga nais nice namin banggitin po dito. At yung isang... Uh, um, isa namin mga isa naming member sa unang hakbang ay um, nagsasagawa sila ngayon ng training o peer tutoring mismo mga bata ang nagtutor sa kanilang kapwa bata so bali yung unang hakbang na member namin sa Mandaluyong um, may 25 peer tutors po na nagte-train ng 2 to 4 kids within their neighborhood Magandang um, practice ito para hindi lamang yung mga magulang ang pwede nating i-train para sa pag-assist sa kanilang mga anak, kundi yung mga anak mismo na may capability to be trained as peer tutors. Yan po yung mga ilang nice naming banggitin dito. At syempre, um, yung uh, sa usapin ng uh, um, technology, Uh, yung sa yung isang uh, Senate bill natin na uh, 392 uh, sinusuportahan po namin ang uh, ang ating uh, committee on uh, education arts and culture sa uh, calling the uh, calling to direct the Senate Committee on Basic Education and Arts and Culture to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation on the status of implementation of Republic Act number 10929 or the free internet access in the public places app this the, the condition to ensure flexible blended learning is also guaranteed if the homes of the learners have internet access since learners would have more time in studying stay at home to prevent exposure to the virus and also safeguard their health and wellness And then, number three po, yung gusto namin bangitin, the use of information and communication technology in education must take into account the cultural diversity of the learners, yung kanilang ethnic identity, yung kanilang values, yung kanilang languages, at yung kanilang history of the local communities sa kanilang mga area of location. And at the same time, mahalaga ang konsultasyon sa mga guro in the choice of the essentials essential content of the curriculum, and choice of pedagogical tools of teaching and learning. Gusto po namin uh, maging kasangkot din sa uh, ating uh, ICT, yung uh, role ng mga guro sa pagde-define ng ano ba yung essential ng curriculum at the same time yung pedagogy. At yung pang-apat po, nais nice namin i-recommend yung necessary restrictions and security protocols katulad ng mga filters, firewalls, etc., should be in place to guarantee pedagogical usage, potential hazards to children's health and safety, vulnerability to child abuse like in cyberbullying, and protection to the young children's environment. And with the rising demands on gadgets, mobile phones, and other related hardware due to online learning, i-regulate din po yung prices of these learning devices to make learning accessible. Ang isang worry lang po namin dahil uh, we go for uh, improving our ICT, maraming service providers no, mula sa mga uh, private investors na pumapasok ngayon sa education. So, 
sana maging maayos din yung procurement policies natin kaugnay dito. Yun lang po. Maraming salamat, Senator Wynn. Thank you. Thank you po, ma'am. And uh, si Neng uh, Tamano, is, uh, we were calling her earlier, but she's, I can see her now. Ma'am Weng? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you po. Okay. Uh, magandang tanghali po sa inyo lahat, uh, kay Chairman, Senator Wynn, Senator Jaime Marcos, Senator Binay, Senator Tolentino and other uh, important people, especially uh, Secretary Briones. Uh, magandang tanghali po sa inyo lahat. Ako po si Neng Juliano Tamano. I am the National Chairperson of the Federation of International Cable TV and Telecommunication Association of the Philippines. Gusto ko pong ipaalam sa inyo na sa Cotabato City, meron kaming pilot project with the uh, superintendent of uh, uh, Cotabato City ng uh, uh, DepEd and then very successful ho kami uh, binigyan po namin sila yung aming radio station yung aming cable TV yung aming uh, Facebook live at saka meron din silang modular so nag, nag, uh, meron na ho kaming agreement and then nag start ho sila ginamit nila yung facilities namin live sila so sa first week nag advertise sila ng enrollment out of 55,000 students sa 28 public schools in Cotabato City, 25,000 as of yesterday ang nag-enroll na. So, yan po, gagamitin ho namin yan ng FICTAP Association, iduduplicate namin sa lahat ng membership namin nationwide. So, ulitin ko po, 3-in-1 po yung aming agreement with DepEd. So, yung aming radio station na FM, at saka yung dedicated channel sa cable TV at saka meron silang FB Live at yung kanilang sarili na modular. So naging successful na po kami, nag-launching uh, nag na po sila sa Cotabato City at sumunod na rin po yung uh, Isabela na meron na po nag-launching na rin ang Isabela. At uh, ang problema po namin, yung ibang cable operator namin na kinakausap yung uh, DepEd walang nalalaman yung mga DepEd sa ibang probinsya. Sinasabi nila, wala daw instruction sa kanila yung national office. Doon kami nahihirapan, kaya napakabagal nung implementation namin dahil nga yung iba ayaw mag-entertain at wala daw silang instruction galing sa Manila. Ma'am Neng, is that for free? Baka... Nagbayad po sila sa amin. Nagbayad sila free? sa amin. It's not for free. It's not for free. Uh, sila ho nag-approach sa amin kasi ho, binlock namin yung aming radio station. Uh, Inalis na namin lahat ng aming mga advertisement kasi kailangan nila ng 9 a.m. to 12 noon at 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. So, binigyan namin sila ng isang dedicated channel. Pati yung internet nila sa aming galing Uh, kaya meron silang Facebook Live. Kaya hanggang uh, abroad, meron nag, uh, meron nag communicate sa kanila. Uh, meron ho akong binigay na, na video dyan sa office ni, uh, ng inyong committee para makita ho ninyo yung launching nila. Uh, ginagamit na ho nila yung aming facilities. Pumupunta sila po sa aming studio. Doon na gumagamit na ho sila. It's not, it's not free. Uh, negosyo namin. Kanya lang, ang ginawa namin, nagbigay kami ng uh, 50% discount sa lahat ng mga uh, public school student. 200 lang kasi 400 normally kami. So ngayon, nagsubsidize yung picked up association namin. So 200 lang ang uh, bayad ng mga estudyante. 200 pesos. Baka pwede nyo nang gawing free, ma'am. CSR nyo na lang para sa sudyante naman eh. For your consideration, for your consideration. Uh, kasi ho, ito ho na napag-usapan kasi mahirap din ho ang maintenance eh. Ang maintenance ho ng mga kable namin, mahirap din ho ang maintenance. Pati yung internet, uh, siguro, makipag-usap na lang ho kayo sa DICT kasi ang DICT, sinasabi sa akin, meron daw silang ibibigay na internet sa public school. 
Pero on how to deliver, hindi ko alam paano nila may deliver All right, Ma'am Neng, thank you. Thank you very much for your, uh, to share with us uh, what you have been doing in Cotabato City. And uh, we call on uh, Vero Veronica Itosis. Yes. And then, ka pala sa, S sa LCP, Veronica. Yes, Opo, Mahal, mahalang cities boss. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, and to the rest of the members of the committee. Um, the legal cities of the Philippines fully support the earlier pronouncement of the president to delay the opening of classes until a vaccine against COVID-19 is uh, available in the market for the safety of our children. What the last couple of months has shown us is that the virus is vicious and it is ruthless. It attacks the vulnerable sectors of our society. For the record, Mr. Chair, we support the Department of Education and all its plans to, to continue the learning of our learners. However, initial surveys of our members have shown that existing IT infrastructure is not fully developed. We're listening to Valenzuela, Mr. Chair, and Pasig City, and we cannot help but say sana all. But you know, as a, a former member of our National Executive Board, how cities are not really similarly situated. And in fact, we have six issues, implementation issues that we want uh, uh, to share with the committee. For instance, um, the process of preparing and distributing the materials developed by DepEd is long and tedious. We are not confident that it can be distributed in time for August 24. There's also a sentiment shared by uh, some of our members that there is no assurance that parents will be able to facilitate a modular learning from home. So we might need to uh, clone the uh, Valenzuela City Speaker, Mr. Chair, and bring bring him to, uh, to, our, to our cities so that we can learn more about the Nanay Teacher um, program that is being implemented in Valenzuela. Teaching competencies in reading and math will be difficult when done in modular learning. As a non-math person, Mr. Chair, I know you're a data person. <laughs> As a non-math person, I think it will be a challenge. But uh, we are being assured by DepEd that that's possible. So uh, we'll see. Remotely located areas not close to cell sites have poor internet signals. And I think, Mr. Chair, this is an input to house resolution number three. 91 on uh, Wi-Fi. I don't think we don't think it's a question of connectivity anymore. I think it's a question of really how some cities or areas in our cities are cannot be connected. And then learners from lower grades will not spend uh, will not respond too well to online and offline learning. I think this is already articulated for kinder to grade three. Um, they really need to be teacher, teacher, you know, they need to be one on one. It's going to be a challenge for our teachers to be able to handle that. And I think that's not being shared to the um, higher, higher grades. No. So while the decision to send out our children to school is personal, I have a child too. Uh, by delaying the class opening, I think it will give the national government and the local government um, time to really troubleshoot the issues that are being highlighted in the um, Depth Ed's continuity plans. It will also give a respite to families um, to really focus on the health, safety, and well-being of their children. Um, whether, I think that time will also give uh, public or private schools um, opportunity to be in the best position to address any occurrence of an outbreak. I, we don't think the COVID-19 will be gone anytime soon. It will give teachers more time for training. Um, we know that DepEd is really doing its efforts to train as much as many teachers as possible. But in in far flung areas, Mr. Chair, we get we get um, feedback that not all are are, are being trained, and uh, the numbers are getting higher. But for August, still they're also not confident. And then we can build the IT infrastructure that's needed, which can now support whether distance learning or blended learning, whatever modalities we choose. So we hope that's helpful, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Very helpful, uh, Veronica. In fact, I want to pursue one issue that uh, you mentioned, and I constantly hear this. I want to ask Secretary Briones again, that issue of um, teaching or um, empowering our parents to teach 
and uh, because the parents also are not um, not trained to teach especially complicated subjects such as math and science and especially when it goes when when they go up the higher grade levels um uh, secretary Brian, how do you envision um distance learning and teaching complicated subjects and teaching to um uh, older students the complicated subjects now considering that uh, uh, there is no face to face and everything will be done through distance learning how how do you envision to implement that honorable chair thank you for that very important question i will respond to that question first uh, before I, I also respond to the earlier comments from the other invited resource uh, persons. As to the matter of readiness, when will we be ready? Uh, I don't, I'm not of the mind that the time will come when we will be 100%, 100% ready. By the time we are 100% ready, other problems and complications have come in and changes will have come in again. As said by the president of, of, of Peru, by the time your learners graduate, he said that to ministers of education, whatever you have taught them will have become irrelevant already. So um, education cannot wait. I'd like to cite a quotation from a well-known author who looks into the future, uh, an American, Sigina, si Johnny Greer. Uh, ang sabi niya, the future is under no obligation. Sigina. The future is under no obligation to wait patiently while we get ready for it. Because by the time we are ready, they're already other complications and other challenges. What we did was to identify a date for which we can prepare for and a date where we will make the final assessment and a practically three times a week assessment of uh, daily uh, developments in the regions. A while ago, a question was raised about a local government uh, official who, who stated that he will not allow classes to be open. We verified, and this is in a clan in Region 6, we just verified with the regional director. He is now very enthusiastic about supporting the LCP. This was before we uh, took time out to explain to those who were uh, quite um, hesitant. Um, I also have another quote, and he uh, is everybody's favorite author, and this is Yuval Harari, uh, who wrote first the history of the human race, and then Sabinya, what is the uh, Sabinya chapter? Nya, schools should switch to teaching the four C's critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. And most important of all will be the ability to deal uh, with change. And I find the stories of, of Valenzuela and Pasig very uh, inspiring because they are among the, <clears throat> the local government units where their schools even exceeded the average schools of OECD countries in the PISA examination, even as we had other regions who did not do as well. And, but Pasig and Valenzuela, as I repeat they say are top of the line and Valenzuela is top not only in education but in many other aspects of of uh, social development as to the readiness Tanina uh, a while ago uh, Senator um, Aini and Senator <coughs> Senator Binay uh, asked uh, paano na yung mga nanay eh, sinagot na ni Valenzuela now, they did that even before before COVID. So it is possible to deal with, with parents who are not uh, who are not uh, <clears throat> ready to teach. But we also have parents who tell us off. They say they will be better at teaching. They run home schools. As a matter of fact, since the 1990, we have been allowing parents to homeschool their children. 
because maybe for religious reasons, for other reasons, as long as they comply with the basic curriculum, they can add on to what you want to uh, to um, add on. So uh, all these fears of, of, of readiness, we never can attain full readiness because the world is changing uh, rapidly. Knowledge is changing uh, rapidly. I will not even claim that we are already in the new normal stage because all that we are practicing are old normal. But these old normal strategies have to be improved. They have to be expanded. And the cities have a very, uh, the local governments have a very major role in this. And you can see the variations, for example, uh, I don't have the time, but uh, we had an earlier uh, hearing uh, also with Senator Wynn on the PISA results. Makikita, makukorrelate mo, um, where uh, there is active local interest in education and support for education, there's also a corresponding uh, high level of performance, uh, even in international uh, uh, situations. And I would be willing to, as I said, I am only in the typing uh, skills and um, Facebook and Patex text Jan. I envy our our students, how many thousands of them who, have, who know how to maximize the use of a, a smart uh, cell phone. And I assured the teachers, uh, because if you are so embarrassed about going to learning and this this uh, webinars, etc. I will go along with you. And we also want to train teachers na peding uh, na mag lecture on specific or mag give ng presentations, mag make interesting all these uh, new approaches on the old, the new versions of the old approaches, now which will be distributed, um, it will be shared with, with all who uh, want to make use of them. But we cannot really, uh, as I said, have a one size fits all. Our broad strokes galing sa central office in cooperation with our regional directors. Kami, we all agreed to it. But on the uh, local government level, at the school level, then they make their own. Uh, they make their own um, uh, strategies based. Because what all that we did was to tell them to include um, survey so enrollment on the on the availability availability of online uh, requirements uh, as well. And in the case of Cotabato, uh, what is described is really a perfect uh, blending because they are already using the various approaches. As a matter of fact, I was supposed to go to the launching uh, of, of this uh, program. And uh, as uh, Senator Wynn uh, correctly um, uh, advised, um, we, we are trying to negotiate. We are in the process of negotiating with service providers for, for free uh, 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 use of um, facilities and so on. Or else we can, we have been also uh, talking with our international partners as well, because we know that um, it's going to be a, a costly operation for online. For offline naman, yung mga pag-prepare ng mga modules, we also are aware that uh, itong mga modules which will be print, printed will cost more than online approach. Pero wala tayong magawa kung talagang hindi available ang uh, uh, connectivity. As to the, fa the matter of culture, among the, kasi we are organized uh, among the ano, ministers of education in Southeast Asia, uh, we are all agreed that we will not, uh, we will not uh, uh, consent to have, for example, teacher robots because there are countries are, who are already developing uh, robot teachers or robot assistants. So, Kabinam um, will not consent to it, including Singapore. Singapore is very strong. He said, I will not have my child taught by a robot. So, the humanistic aspect of education will still have to be retained. This is in response to, uh, to uh, Flora. Now, as to the use of um, postponing that payments, that will have to be national policy. 
to say that's also covered by by law and that will have to be uh, negotiated. As for transferring funds from other agencies, uh, that would also it has to come from the national level because uh, that will create uh, discomfort among the different departments. Babawasan sila para ibigay kay education, o babawasan si education na ibibigay para sa another another uh, department. That will have to be. Uh, national uh, uh, decision. The matter of peer teaching that has already been uh, ex uh, tried and uh, it works. It works at the college level, like courses like engineering, the senior students teach the freshmen and so on. And then so elementary school, we also have been trying that. Probably we should expand uh, the coverage of mass teaching. At saka yung hiningi ni Kaflora na uh, psychosocial preparation, actually, sinabi ko na kanina, uh, Honorable Chair, that the first week, this is uh, the opening, proposed opening on August 24, uh, a few days will be spent, or perhaps the entire week, in preparing the learners and preparing the teachers for the um, uh expanded uh, or for the pivot that we are initiating in um, in education. On the matter of mass uh, testing, the Department of Health have issued um, an advisory that it is not necessary to to test everyone because there was an attempt in the Senate, Deba, the Senate intended to test all their employees. Uh, uh, we can start with those who have uh, who have symptoms and minimum requirement ito this is why kung mag face to face tayo um, schools or clusters of schools should have ready ppes and and uh, equipment etc uh, just in case there will be uh, a an unwelcome uh, a break up uh, this is related to the monthly medical checkup uh, we already have medical uh, medical programs also for our teachers. As to hazard pay, uh, the legislature has been very generous. Uh, we have been giving special hazard pay. And our teachers right now are receiving special hazard pay if they are teaching in far-flung areas, even as whether they go physically or not, this has to be, uh, this has, uh, to be retained. Now, on the matter of postponement, because this is a source of much uh, uh, debate, uh, we made, I ask you, Sik Ann, Your Honor, to calculate how much it will cost for us to continue. Kasi ang paid vacation ng teachers natin is April, May. June, we asked them to officially report, whether by, by text or by uh, physical appearance, so that they can be on record as already uh, back to school. I ask you, Sik Ann, to calculate kung halimbawa one year of waiting, that will cost $395 billion to compensate our teachers. I doubt if our teachers will be willing to pay the current rate of $5,000 uh, yung, ano, yung um, um, bayanihan thing natin, $5,000 to $8,000 because Minimum nila is from 21 to 30,000, and it will cost 395 billion for one year of waiting. Kung one year yon, waiting for the vaccine or postponing, waiting until everything is corrected. By the time we have corrected the present problems, there will be future problems. This will not be the last pandemic. There are others, plagues, wars which will be which might suddenly appear and if we don't tackle these problems now we will be unprepared to meet the problems which will occur when we feel that we are already ready mr chair that is our view thank you very much thank you thank you madam secretary and uh, uh we have I, I know we have gone uh, overboard uh, in terms of time but we have to important speakers that we want to call on uh dr hoxson of pnu and then mr ec feingold of unicef so we recognize dr hoxson ma'am good afternoon mr chair good afternoon everyone uh thank you mr chair for recognizing uh philippine normal university 
uh, PNU would like to uh, emphasize our support to the free internet access as proposed. Um, kailangan po natin ito sa sitwasyon ng ating uh, flexible learning. Kailangan natin ito para matulungan ang ating mga mag-aaral at ang mga guro para maipagpatunoy ang uh, pag-aaral sa gitna ng uh, sitwasyon na ating kinakaharap. Um, we will fully support the learning continuity plan of the Department of Education. In particular, uh, Mr. Chair, would like to uh, support DepEd in its efforts to assist our teachers in the delivery of flexible learning. Uh, may tinitingnan po ang Philippine Normal University na tatlong mahalagang bagay kung paano natin may shift ang ating uh, education sa flexible learning. Una, Mr. Chair, ang curriculum at ang nagawa na po ito ng uh, Department of Education nung inilabas nila ang kanilang uh, minimum learning competencies. Sa DepEd po, ang tawag nila dito ay essential competencies. The data that uh, the Philippine Normal University has, Mr. Chair, on the um, level of literacy and numeracy of our teachers, not of students, Mr. Chair, of our teachers, is below the average. this level, they do not support our students. The essential competencies of um, the Department of Education support what the focus on in the teaching and the we know that DepEd is moving towards ensuring um, that the curriculum are uh, uh, the curriculum I mean is uh, reviewed it not only for the current situation but to be used for the future. The second um, assessment I heard of resource persons earlier talking about assessment. PNU supports the move. Uh, uh, Dr. Jeannie, Dr. Jeannie, putul putul kayo. Can you, Dr. Jeannie, Dr. Hoxon, are you listening, Bako? Aye, ba? Dr. Hoxon, can you hear me? Dr. Yes, uh, Mr. Uh, me medyo na, na putol putol kayo. Can you repeat yung number two? Number okay. two. Okay. okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Apo. Ang second layer po ng shifting na aming sinusuportahan ay ang assessment. Uh, PNU supports the move to look into assessment. However, the focus we request is on the process rather than the product. This, Mr. Chair, is what assessment experts in the in the, in the international and local uh, local uh, uh, academics uh, look into the humanized aspect of assessment. Finally, Mr. Chair, uh, PNU supports that its move to prepare all the materials which are human, which are simple, focused, and contextualized. Gusto lamang po namin uh, bigyan ng diin na ang pagkukontextualize ng materials will be very, is, is actually very difficult. Kasi sa loob ng isang division ng DepEd ay marami ng contextualized aspects, no? Kaya uh, supportahan natin ang DepEd doon. Uh, ang PN nyo rin po, uh, Mr. Chair, ay uh, naniniwala na ang pag-shift natin will take a while because this is unprecedented. DepEd has always uh, established its flexible learning and blended learning. Matagal na po silang may ganyan. Kaya lang, ito po ay buong Pilipinas nilang gagawin na ganun. No? Dati-dato, kung alin lang apektadong lugar, yun lamang ang mag -blended. Eh ngayon po, buong Pilipinas na. So, I want Dr. Hoxon? Dr. Hoxon? Nawala siya. Yes, yes. Yes, putol-putol uh, kayo. Hello? Hello? Yes, we can hear you now. 
Okay, all right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Finally po, ang gusto, ang gusto namin iparating mula sa Philippine Normal University at paulit-ulit po namin itong diskurso, sana po hindi natin makalimutan ang mga guro sa ating usapan. Palagi-lagi po natin iisipin na ang teacher quality ang pinaka-importanting paradigm para ang lahat ng pinag-uusapan natin ay matuloy at ang lahat ng mangyayari in the future ay hindi na tayo mangangapa. We focus our support to our teachers. We focus our action and all of our possible assistance to our teachers and we solve the problem of education in the country. Our teachers are the primary uh, focus of the delivery of education. Marami pong salamat from PNU, Mr. Chair. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Hoxon. And uh, I heard you speak uh, during uh, the SDG hearing talking about uh, teachers training and we do want to engage you in teachers training. Uh, this is also in line with uh, DepEd's Educalidad, um, uh, Sulong Educalidad. So uh, we have some reform legislation that we have in mind that we want to uh, engage PNU with. No? So we'll, we'll call on you on a separate day. And lastly, Mr. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, uh, Senator uh, Nancy. Whether one question lang kay Ms. Hoxon. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Uh, Ms. Hoxon, sa PNU ba, parang um, ini-integrate nyo na dun sa mga would-be teachers natin itong uh, new way of teaching? Thank you for the uh, question, uh, Senator Binay. Yes, madam. Uh, ang, ang Philippine Normal University po ay katulong ng DepEd na nag-develop ng Philippine Professional set ng standards na uh, uh, inadapt ng Department of 2017. Ibig sabihin po ng standards na ito, ito na ang ating uh, ay na ng kanilang mga trabaho sa local na real na hindi rin naman nawawala ang international benchmark. Kasama po sa Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers, ang pangangailangan na set ang guro na ma-address niya ang difficult circumstances. At kasama po sa difficult circumstances, ang geographical isolation, uh, at maraming iba pa po, kasama po ang pandemya at hinaharap. Hindi lamang po nabanggit ito ng pandemya, pero yung difficult circumstances is a, is a broad discourse that uh, responds to uh, what we currently have. So yan na po ang ginagawa ng PNU, na ilatag na po namin iyan sa ibang mga teacher training institutions kasi tama po kayo, Senator Pinay. Kahit ano pong gawin ng Department of Education na training sa kanilang mga guro, kapag ang pre-service teacher education ay hindi nakasuporta sa future thinking ng, ng, ng DepEd, magkakaroon at magkakaroon ng gap. So we maintain our stance at PNU. I-link po natin silang dalawa. Sa pamamagitan po ng link na yon, sa kalaman po natin mapagpumpayan na ang patuturo sa ating mga guro from pre-service to in-service ay uh, mananatili sa ating bansa. Thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you, uh, Ma'am Senator. And Ms. Hobson, kasama na din dito yung, because I think this will be the new norm, eh, yung paggamit ng technology when it comes to teaching. Um, incorporated na rin itong heavy use of technology. Yes, madam. Ang, ang pangalan po ng uh, strand mo yan ay positive use of ICT. Hindi lamang po ito nakatoon sa paggamit, nakatoon dito ang data privacy, nakatoon alin ang tama at hindi tamang sabihin via social media, kailan pwedeng gamitin ang social media. Ang Facebook, sabi natin social media siya, pero sa pag-aaral po, ito, ito po ay pwedeng gamitin sa academic needs. Kaya lamang, may mga parameters. So kasama na po ito sa Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers na develop ng, R ng Research Center for Teacher Quality na nasa PNU po. Chair. Yeah. Yes, Senator Binay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. E.C. Feingold? Mr. Thank you, e. Mr. Chair, could you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Great. Thank you so much. First of all, thank you for, for this kind invitation. So UNICEF is honored to be in this session and to, to learn from the different participants and also to share some perspective that might be helpful for, for this discussion. And, and I'd like to, to start congratulating uh, DEPET for, for its leadership under this difficult 
challenges and this difficult context of COVID-19. So UNICEF has been uh, closely supporting the Department of Education on, on developing different strategies to, to respond to this pandemic and, and to see from the education sector what are the best measures to, to be undertaken. Uh, uh, Senator Tolentino mentioned one, one interesting initiative that is the learning passport that UNICEF has been um, using in other countries. So this was part of the discussion with, with the PED, with the team of the Honorable Secretary Briones. And we um, decided that in the case of the Philippines, it was better to strengthen the, the online platform that was already launched, so which is Commons. This is a, a, a platform that is very promising and, and UNICEF is um, committed to support its strengthening as a best, best strategy for the country uh, for providing online education. In, in other countries like Ukraine, for example, and, and others in which UNICEF have been using le learning passport, there was no learning platform from the government, uh, but that is not the case of the Philippines. So after this analysis with the PET team, we, we agreed that it was better to, to enhance commons and to support the conversion of local self-learning self modules to eBooks. And this is this is going in, in the right di direction. In general, the learning continuity plan that DEPET has prepared is, uh, as I said, in the right direction. UNICEF and many other education partners have been supporting the preparation of, of this plan. And it includes not only the, the online learning, but it has a, a blended approach. And I think that, uh, again, no, it's a right decision to combine what can be taught uh, with least distance learning, but also with um, what can be done um, in the classrooms. Um, and, and this would depend on, on the most important question on, on, on when the schools can reopen. And I, I'll go back to that in a bit. But I, I like to say that uh, another important element of the learning continuity plan is that it provides other uh, means of education besides online education to those who don't have access to, to education. There is a digital divide in the country and in other countries as well. And we need to find solutions for those who are the most disadvantaged. You know? And the learning continuity plan includes radio education, TV education, and also uh, modules to be uh, printed, modules to be distributed to, to those who don't have any type of connectivity at home. So this approach um, is fully supported by all the, the education partners that are part of the education forum. We have been having several discussions on, on this on this plan, and um, and so this this um, I'd like to say that this proposed resolution to review the impact of COVID-19 uh, to Philippines basic education is is very timely. So we we know that there are a number of things that we need to consider and to review as part of this process because this is new for everyone not only in the philippines but in the world so this context is something that we need to learn on the going we need to be flexible um, and there are some elements that unicef would like to, to put on the table for for the reflection and the discussion no, one is that uh, children with disability and indigenous uh, people children should be uh, also a priority in this discussion, we need to see how the solutions that are being proposed for, for this population are, are, are being effective. Uh, so these are populations that can be most affected by this type of, of, of context and crisis. So always the, the most disadvantaged populations are the ones who are, are uh, most affected. And we need to not only have good policies on them, but to follow up and monitor how effective they are going to uh, they are being implemented. Another important element, and this is what I mentioned before, is on when to open the schools, right? To physically open the schools, because we know that the classes are, are starting on August um, on August 24th, and 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 the question remains on when is the the best time to to physically open the schools. And this is a question that all the governments, you know, in the world are asking themselves or have been have been asking themselves. You no. Know? When do we open the schools? And there is no right answer for that. So it would depend on the context, on the situation, how the COVID-19 cases uh, are evolving, and also in having all the safety considerations in place. So um, 
we need to take three elements into account for, for discussing this question. One is that we need to, to, to acknowledge that distance learning is not going to be the same as in-person learning. So there are a number of studies that uh, prove that we, even with technologies, um, the impact in learning is not as good as in-person education. So of course we know that the context that we are facing um, is forcing us to, to provide distance learning and, and that's what uh, all the countries have been doing. But at the same time, we need to recognize that distance learning is, is a complement and will uh, not substitute or not replace the, the in-person classes. So maybe in the future with the technology de develops even more because there have been a lot of progress in, technology, in, uh, in technologies, um, there would be more, less differences. But, but as, as of now, there are a number of studies, for example, in MIT, uh, with JPAL, they collected uh, more than 100 studies analyzing the difference between uh, um, digital learning and in-person learning, and they found um, significant difference. So we need to recognize that um, this decision of, of, of uh, not reopening the school will affect the learning of students. That's one element. but. There are two other elements. One is the well-being and the protection of the children. So we need to make sure that the health of the children is number one priority. And the third element is on the uh, safety protocols that we can put in place. And this is what most countries are doing in the world. So they are developing safety protocols so they can reopen schools and make sure that their children are not at risk. So uh, UNICEF with UNESCO, the World Bank, the World Food Program uh, have developed a framework for safety opening of schools. We will share this um, with the uh, with the committee. We'd like to to put this on um, the table. So this, it has some recommendations on what are these safety considerations that we need to take into account. So because so we know that while the context is not favorable, we cannot reopen schools. But we need to start thinking on how we prepare for that in the future putting the safety protocols in place so we can provide these opportunities for children. Uh, that's a number one. Number two, it's something that Senator Binet mentioned on the role of parents and how we can propor, uh, provide support to parents. Now they are uh, providing a lot of uh, the support to the students when they remain at home. This is something that is happening in different countries in the region and in the world. So what type of support can we provide to parents who are working or who are dealing with other different uh, stressful situations in, in this context in which they can they also have to support their children. This is another important element. Uh, another impor important question for the review uh, is on the ICT readiness. So how many families and students can afford to buy digital devices that can be used for learning? How many stable internet connections are there at home? These kind of questions are important. The infrastructure readiness, um, the content readiness, and here I like to highlight again that uh, UNICEF is supporting the not only the Commons platform but another another online platform as well for the ALS Center for the Alternative Learning uh, System. So this is another important part. No, and of course the the offline and non technological solutions for those who don't have connectivity. Uh, and finally, to 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 put an end to my, to my intervention is how to develop social and emotional well-being of learners, uh, of their parents and their caregivers and teachers in this context of, of distance learning. No social and emotional learning skills are directly linked to performance and learning. So there are a number of study, studies that have proven this. So we need to, to start thinking of this element that is very important for the holistic development and well-being of our students and their, their parents and our teachers. So, um, and thank you very much again for, for the invitation. Um, so, I, I'd like to, to again, uh, congratulate and, and, and acknowledge the, the partnership that, that we are doing with the Department of Education. Um, and, and we are fully supporting the PET's uh, decision and continue uh, uh, together with the other education partners, uh, trying to find the solutions to, 
to overcome the COVID-19 challenge. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Thank you, thank you, thank you, EC. And uh, Mr. Pierre has a quick reaction. Mr. Pierre. Uh, Pierre. Uh, thank you for recognizing us, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, one of the things that uh, is a significant takeaway from Secretary Briones is that if we will wait to be ready, we will never be ready. She is totally correct. This is even if, for instance, we pass the Open Access Data Transmission Act last Congress, which you authored, we would not we would not have today yet the kind of ICT infrastructure that would be able to support uh, ICT enabled learning. We know this. It takes time from a policy to be enacted and from it to be actually operationalized in the market. In fact, uh, we, for your consideration, will submit to the committee through our partners in, uh, in the Better Broadband Alliance some points for the deaf ed to consider. But education is not our, it's not our expertise. Our expertise is information and communications technology rights, governance, development, and technology. And we can tell you right now that we are not ready if we are going to try to use the magic bullet of online only, online enabled, or even blended learning that's uh, based on wireless technologies that cost a lot, that are not reliable, and uh, and are sometimes out of uh, out of the wallet share of our citizens. So, uh, what do we recognize in the DepEd's uh, policy, which we totally appreciate? There is room for the application of legacy technologies. Remember, ICT and the internet is not going to be a magic bullet today. We are not yet ready. We will never be ready if we're going to use only online. We must leverage legacy technologies, whether it be cable TV using the three must-carry uh, community channels of, uh, of cable TV, whether it's free-to-air TV. If there are no uh, TV transmitters in the area, then let's go for FM radio transmitters. If there are no FM radio transmitters, then we can use AM radio transmitters. If there still are none, we can use, for instance, the, the two-way radios that are being used by our fishermen to communicate from ground to shore, uh, from, from sea to shore. And if these technologies are still not available, the LGU might consider Bronze Age technology hand uh, delivery of materials by hand, if, we're, if that's what it needs to be. Partner with your TODA if the, if the delivery of the materials has to be moved from the teacher to the student in the morning and then in the afternoon from the student to, to the teacher for correction. Our point here as democracy.net.ph and as Better Broadband Alliance is that we must recognize that ICT is not yet the magic bullet now. Therefore, as Sec Secretary Briones said, if we're going to wait, we will never get there. So many children will fall through the cracks, especially those who are disadvantaged either by socioeconomic status or as mentioned by UNICEF uh, through, through disability of some, uh, of some nature. The point is, all options must be on the table. Please do not treat ICT as a magic bullet. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Pierre. And thank you for uh, sharing your thoughts, uh, being an expert in IT. Uh, definitely, we see a lot of, um, a lot of um, shortcomings when it comes to ICT. That's why uh, part of the learning continuity plan, which I totally agree, is the use of uh, traditional modes no? uh, or legacy technology, technology such as TV and radio. And with that, uh, Secretary, I just want to ask one last question. When do we see TV and radio 
uh, broadcasting um, curriculum, so broadcasting materials for our children. When do we see that? I understand that in NCR, uh, that will be a medium of choice, but when do we see the start of that broadcast? Opinion and also thank you, uh, Honorable Senator, for that very important question. Uh, we are um, now in the process of um, the, uh, converting our uh, most essential learning uh, competences into uh, TV format as well as radio format. And of course, we are aware that these two are, are different, but there are also offers of assistance because there are already existing children's programs on both television and, and radio to for them to share their uh, experience. Ang ayaw ko lang, uh, yung, I have seen uh, versions, for example, of Sesame Street. Uh, why Sesame Street? We have so many uh, stories. We have so many indigenous folk tales on which to, um, which can be the start of even for complex issues like math. I have seen a book uh, written by, as I said, two PhDs in mathematics where they teach in a very subtle way through the adventures of Juan Tamad and his uh, all, all the manifold adventures and the characters that he met, which introduce various concepts, for example, of mathematics. So um, we are working on this. Uh, we hope to make um, a final as assessment uh, as early as we can. We're thinking July 15, for example, for physical infrastructure, um, just um, in case uh, we see that there will be more uh, local governments, uh, uh, provinces which uh, uh, don't have uh, additional zero uh, victims and, and so on. So we're thinking along those lines, perhaps uh, a month before August 24 or even earlier, but they're working on it. and. Uh, uh, as I said, uh, we're working very, very hard and we're always in constant uh, consultation with each other and with our uh, uh, experts and advisors, as well as the parents themselves. Uh, hopefully, uh, either July 15 or late July, meron na tayong uh, clear idea. Right now, sa Deped Commons, there are already uh, stories and concepts. Makikita natin yan. And there are already uh, webinars for uh, training of teachers. This will be integrated uh, in our National Educators Academy, uh, which is also undergoing transformation. Uh, it's, it's really, um, we're running against time because we know that every month or even a year of a postponement will mean uh, uh, devastation for our for our learners and will mean that we will be left behind especially since we are aware that our neighbors are already uh, also going into various uh, methodologies and technologies to continue with education even as they are also threatened uh, by covid hopefully mr chair we will be uh, 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 updating you uh, as regularly as we can. Tomorrow I meet, tomorrow and tonight, tomorrow I'll be meeting with the executive committee and then up to tonight I'll be meeting with the MANCOM. MANCOM includes already our superintendents and our regional uh, directors, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, thank you, Madam Secretary. And uh, Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, Senator Binay. Uh, just for clarification, case Secretary Briones. Yung August 24, ho, I mean, sure na yan, ba? I mean, it's a go. Ang hindi lang po... That is approved by by the uh, by ATF. And uh, we already, uh, the, the president is aware of it. The spokesperson is aware of that date. As I said, we, we need to have a target. Uh, we need to have a target to propel our work, to speed up our work. And um, we might stumble if we stop in the middle and say next year na lang. Baka madapa kami. It's still running already uh, at a very fast uh, pace. And it's not only us in central office. Ang guidance is from central office, from our undersecretaries and myself. 
but the actual uh, implementation details will be coming from our regional directors. And uh, as I said, uh, we very quickly verified that the claim that a mayor does not want to have a uh, school opening, etc. And um, uh, hindi naman totoo yan, nag-back out na yung mayor na yan. Another mayor also of a very big city in the Visayas also made that same announcement. And when we uh, personally explained to them, uh, uh, these uh, local government officials, they saw that uh, being a government official yourself, including also the honorable senator, you know that local government units are very competitive. And uh, if they see that uh, everybody else is already moving in, in one direction, they will not say, I will not do it, etc. They would want to be part of this step forward, this pivot that we are uh, initiating towards a quality education. So, di ba dapat, Secretary, tuldukan na, tuldu na natin yung usapin na hindi matutuloy ang pasok ng August 24, di ba? Parang, because, I mean, the way you're explaining right now, parang ang nasisense ko, eh, there's a question mark whether no. or not we'll have uh, right. classes on August 24. Yes. Uh, right now, talagang ang fix is August 24. That's, it was approved two times already by the IATF. It was confirmed last Monday. And um, I appreciate your bringing this out into the open because there's really a great deal of confusion because you have several versions of what is claimed to be the truth. Oh, so, in a joint press conference coming dalawa ni spokesperson, and uh, we both uh, mentioned that it's August 24, mentioned it himself, and I also spoke with the president. So, uh, that's it. It's August 24, and we are all here for that. I guess just to summarize, Secretary, um, on August 24, Tuloy ho ang pasok, but it will not be face-to-face. -face. No, not necessarily, not face-to-face. -face. And but are you all still preparing for a face-to-face -face scenario within the year? Or um, like, like will be, for example, uh, as I was saying, there are, um, there are local governments, uh, there are units, there are islands which, not, which have not even heard of COVID even as they are very close also to places which are crowded with COVID, uh, COVID victims. No? So um, we are also closely monitoring this and we'll, we are reporting um, to the president on, on, the, on the situation. But as far as we are concerned in the department, August 24 still holds. And that is the official, um, official uh, position that uh, supported fully by the IATF and reported to the president and also announced by the spokesperson himself. So, uh, ulit -ulit I know. Natin na talagang papasok. May pasok sa yes. August by, uh, uh, Hindi face to face. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's, it's a blended yes. way of learning. Yes. I have been wondering and spending sleepless nights, how come now we made the announcement as early as May 8th in bucket, there is still, I know, uh, there is uh, still confusion. There is resistance. Parents saying, "I will not risk my child." And daming nag p of the eyes sa akin. I have been called a whore and so on. Report in Facebook. So, sabi ko, bakit kaya? And then, uh, I we I suddenly realized that. Uh, when, as a rule, I mean, generally in our society, when we say school opening, it's always physical. So, pag sabi naming school opening 24, yung mga uh, ayaw ng ano, uh, face to face, all, all started screaming and shouting. But they did not read the second sentence. Dalawa kasing sentences yan, August 24, and then uh, recognizing also the special situations. The president spoke up, and uh, since then we have uh, uh, talked with him, given him the uh, information that was required, and the uh, spokesperson uh, also twice uh, mentioned August. But we apologize for whatever confusion there was, but uh, frankly, in our mind, it was never uh, 
it has it has always been August 24. It's the closest to September. It's the closest way of obeying the law. It's the pinaka ano yan, eh, last day of August. Last day of August kasi si Senator is weekend eh. And we wanted to spend at least a few days in advance to, to you know to orient the students, the teachers, and so on. And we're, we're working against a very tough uh, timetable. But uh, uh, if we keep moving uh, our our timetables, then we keep on confusing uh, the public, especially the parents, and even our legislative supporters. So then on. I agree, Secretary. You know, we just have to bite the bullet and go through the birth pains, the bad. Dahil this is something different. This is something new. So, talagang given na yun na may birth pains tayo pag dadaan ng dito. Um, Dila po, thank, Mr. Chair. Thank you for the for the encouragement. Thank you for the inspiration. To you, to Honorable Senator, to Kong Mark, uh, to Senator Marcos, and all of you who have stood uh, with us throughout all this. Uh, uh, conflicting information which has been coming out. Thank you. Well, Secretary, correct me if I'm wrong. No, the status is or the decision is to open schools, but not face to face. Yes. Blended. And the, Blended. And the Biden president is no face to face until yes. a vaccine will be discovered. That's the standing policy. That, that, that's the standing policy, but. We are monitoring, uh, like yesterday, we had an IATF meeting looking at, again, the risk assessment and so on and so forth. Yes. All right. So the readiness right now, we are not ready, but by August 24, uh, I, I believe that um, the elements that we are looking for and we are wanting would be uh, would be ready. We will be, uh, there was suggestion and advice that uh, maybe we can pilot it. Uh, before August 24, some of these different approaches. Uh, Valenzuela and Pasig are very special. You think you think also Taguig, uh, you think Batangas, uh, you think certain schools in Cebu, uh, and um, mga science high schools. Uh, they are also in a different. They are also in a very special uh, situation. But generally, uh, that's how it is at present with the president's declaration. And he has declared full support. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary. Well, if you decide to go uh, to launch a pilot program, uh, Valenzuela will be more than happy to be the pilot uh, city. Paborito po ni Yusek ang Valenzuela City. be more than happy to... Uh, to uh, win! Sensor <laughs> win! Yes. Hindi na kailangan maging pilot ang Valenzuela. Nag-take off na kayo eh. <laughs> Not with this program. We're still, uh, we're still uh, complying and uh, adjusting. But uh, Secretary, thank you very much for spending five hours uh, in this uh, meeting. And uh, definitely we cleared up many, many things, including the, uh, the, the timetable and also the August 24 opening. But uh, certainly... Uh, we have cleared a lot of the details in terms of operationalizing the LCP. And one thing for sure that I have gathered today, uh, there is ground support. No, uh, yes. Definitely the challenges are there. Uh, the struggles are there. Funding is, is a big issue. But I did sense any resistance in terms of implementing the LCP. Uh, everyone is willing to put in the time and the sacrifices and everyone's willing to um, face the challenges in order for our children to learn. So um, thank you very much for your time. And uh, this will not be the last. Uh, uh, yes. like you said, of course. Step step. <laughs> of course. There has to be close uh, monitoring on the part of the legislators and, and the, all the sectors. But the international, they are also watching and they are also observing. Uh -oh. Like you said in your in your in, in in some of your papers, the Department of Education is one fourth of the total population of the Philippines, yes. way or yes. the other. So the impact of our lives is certainly wide and deep. So uh, we will have another update hearing uh, later on, and we would really love to hear again from the secretary. On Mr. The, Chair, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes. Mr. Before we end, can we just uh, request if we can be provided with a copy of all the presentations made today? 
We will uh, furnish your office with the presentation. We have some, but we will collate it and uh, send it to the senators. So once again, Secretary, thank you very much. You, thank you. and family, maraming maraming salamat po. And all, all the stakeholders and all the uh, different resource persons who joined us today for five hours, maraming salamat po sa inyong oras. This meeting is uh, hereby suspended. Thank you.